we'll move forward on. So starting with District 1, Mr. Capel, uh, state your name and uh, everybody following the suit. Jason, I'm not hearing you. I don't know what order you're supposed to go in, but this is Gary Griffith and I- Griffith. Hold on, Mr. Griffith. I'll call y'all in just a second. I'm trying to get the commissioners first. Go ahead, Mr. Capel. I misunderstood you, sorry. I'm still not hearing you, Jason. Is anybody hearing Jason? No. 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 Needs to hit the mute unmute button at the bottom. Oh, while we wait for Jason to figure that out, this this is Eric Lansing, the assistant county attorney. Uh, I'm just going to know a couple of other things that need to be noted. Uh, and that is that the meeting is being held in compliance with ordinance number 200428-6A. Uh, the continuity of government ordinance that was adopted by the Board of Supervisors uh, on April 28th uh, of this year. Um, and uh, let's see, and that Sandra Thornton was responsible for receiving public comment in writing. Um, and uh, that those opportunities to, to give public comment uh, and participate in the electronic meeting uh, were announced uh, so that they could be sent to her. I, I think then once we identify the commissioners present, we'll nail down everything that ordinance tells us we have to. Thank you, sir. Mr. Capel? Still not hearing you, Jason. All right, let's go to District 2, Mr. Yancey. This is George C. Yancey. I'm located in my home at 16170 Coxfield Road, Gordonsville, Virginia. District 2 representative on the Planning Commission. This is Donald Brooks. I'm District 3 representative and I am at the County Planning Office sitting at Sandra Thornton's desk. This is uh, Julie Zelnick. I'm in District 4 at 34104 Indian Town Road in Locust Grove, Virginia. This is Jim Hutchison, uh, District 5 Planning Commissioner. I'm at my home at 525 Harrison Circle in Locust Grove, Virginia. Back to Mr. Capel again. Can we hear you? We're still not hearing you, Mr. Capel. It's showing on my screen that you're muted. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear hey. you. Yeah. Okay, is it, is it possible the phone call-ins are muted? I'm not for sure. I, I'm calling in by phone. Hold on just a second. All right, Jason, go ahead. Can you hear me okay now? We can. Okay, this is uh, uh, Jason Capel, District 1, Planning Commissioners. 6315 Spotswood Trail, Gordonsville, Virginia. Okay, uh, Sandra, then Eric has already introduced himself and then I think Tracy's in the back there. I'm Sandra Thornton, I'm Planning Services Manager. I'm at my home in Louisa. We can't hear you, Tracy, on mute. Here, here. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, Tracy Newman in my office at 128 West Main Street. County Administrators with us, Mr. Voorhees. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Good. <laughs> Uh, I'm in the Gordon building in uh, downtown Orange. Okay, uh, the applicants can just identify themselves as being present at the time when we get to the... Um, we, don't, we don't need that introduction now. I do want to make 
a couple notices to us. This is going to be a rather long meeting, commissioners. So please have your electricity facility pretty readily accessible to you. I don't know if the batteries can stay up as long as this meeting may take so that you don't lose. If you're not speaking, the preference would be that you stay muted so the background noise would stay out. Um, and then uh, again, uh, mute yourself to start talking. I think we got a pretty good handle on that. We will maintain a quorum from the beginning of the meeting to the end of the meeting. If you leave the meeting for anything, if we're not on a break, then uh, let us know so that we can con uh, maintain a quorum. Um, <clears throat> certainly, we know that uh, we have a lot of business to take care of. So I would ask that you be patient, kind, and considerate because we're trying to uh, tread through this pretty quickly. Any questions so far based on the statements I've made? No, sir. Okay. Can I have approval of the agenda, please? Chairman, Chairman Brooks, can you hear, can you hear, can you hear me, now? me now? So I moved. I, I second that, Mr. Brooks. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposition? It looks like it's unanimous. Can I have the approval of the minutes of the June 18th, 2020 meeting? So moved. There's, I second that. So it's removed and second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Aye. aye. I'm sorry, I got quick that time. All opposed. May not hear none. Chairman votes aye also. The Chairman Brooks. Go ahead. Are you, good. You are, I just wanted to check. You can hear me now. My apologies. Thank you. I can hear you. Um, let's move into the preliminary plat review of the Winterbury Creek Garnet Street LLC. Ms. Thornton, you want to help us a little bit and kind of introduce us and tell us where we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to be doing? Yes, sir, I will. I wanted to um, give you some history uh, for this matter um, because it's it's been pending for a while. Um, the preliminary with improvement plan was submitted by Garrett Street LLC in April 2018, prior to the county's adoption of a revised subdivision ordinance effective April 25th, 2018. Um, it appears that for various reasons, referral of the plat to the Planning Commission was deferred after the submittal was deemed complete by staff. Um, since that time, the applicant has been working with staff as well as the Virginia Department of Transportation to address concerns um, and particularly a request for an exception concerning the requirement for a second entrance to the subdivision. Um, in January of 2019, a proposal for addressing the entrance requirement was submitted by the applicant's agent and Brian David and I determined that that uh, proposal um, should be forwarded to VDOT for their assessment um, since neither of us is a um, transportation engineer. Um, on May 7th of, of this year, 2020, Mark Wood of VDOT provided the determination that the proposed uh, or that the proposal was satisfactory and that the applicant would not need an exception from VDOT to satisfy the VDOT requirements. Accordingly, staff determined that VDOT's response was sufficient to approve the proposal regarding the second entrance requirement. And then following that, in consultation with the county attorney, it was determined that despite the length of time since the original submittal, it was appropriate to complete the review under the pre-April 25th, 2018 ordinance. So I had included in the uh, package of materials forwarded to you earlier today, um, comments that had been received from the various uh, reviewing agencies, um, the uh, communications from SHIMP Engineering uh, regarding a, a waiver request uh, pertaining to um, some of the, the infrastructure and those SIMP systems. Um, uh, and uh, we've got the, the VDOT communications for your information as well. Um, the material that we have does appear to be consistent with the applicable ordinance, but I did want to point out that prior to recordation of final uh, record plats, 
um, for the project, the county uh, will verify that all agency requirements have been satisfied. And I believe um, Mr. Shemp uh, representing the uh, applicant is on if you have any questions for him. Is there any questions of Sandra at this time or comments by the commissioner before we move to Mr. Shrimp? Yeah, Sandra, during this period of time, Ms. Hutch, uh, has any effort been made to work with DEQ? Um, no, the, because the, the concern was focused on the, the VDOT, uh, or no, I'm sorry, not the VDOT requirement, but um, we were seeking VDOT's input on the request to uh, modify the, the second entrance, which was required by the county's ordinance. But those, you. you know, all of all of those, you know, uh, necessary approvals. I mean, as I said, we'll have to verify that that everything is in place before we issue any permits um, to begin any sort of construction related to the project. Any other questions of Mrs. Thornton? Uh, yeah, yeah, this, this is, is uh, Jason Capel. I mean, I mean, there, there, were, there, were, there were a number, number of documents, documents sent, sent this, this morning, morning that, that um, you know, I wasn't, wasn't able, able to look, look at, at uh, today. And, and so, so, you know, you know I worked, worked during, during the day. day and, and so, so I, I, got I got done working and opened my email. email and there's, and there's a, number a number of waivers and, 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 and a lot, lot of document here that I haven't really had time to review. Any other commissioners have any comment? That's a point well taken. There, there, are, there are some considerable, there is considerable paperwork here. Um, I didn't get a chance to read through it all either. I, I skimmed it. Sandra, was anything in that, the, that paperwork that alarmed you or didn't alarm you? Um, no, no, I included it primarily for your information that you could see that prior staff had, had approved the one waiver request, um, the, the January uh, 2019 um, waiver request was, I, I believe, to be satisfied by VDOT's um, response that we received in May. Um, and, and I will, you know, maybe ask Eric to, to confirm this. I think with the subdivision review, I don't know, um, since this is only the second time I've been through this um, with you all during my tenure with Orange, um, subdivision review is, is considered kind of a, a ministerial act so that mm -hmm. if the um, plat complies with the requirements of the ordinance, I, I believe um, we're compelled to move it forward. Yes, I can confirm that. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that also, but I think this is just administratively trying to push it to the next step. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Any other uh, commissioner uh, concerns or comments? I guess Sandra Hutch again. Uh, when I went through the plats, I saw nothing on easements. Are there any? Um. I don't know that there are, but maybe that's a question for Justin. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you to address that to Justin. Justin, are you with us? Yes, here. Okay, can you answer Mr. Hutchison's question, please? Uh, sure, I will. So it's a preliminary plat, so the easements are schematically shown. That's what's required. If you look on sheet, four, four, five, or I think six of the plan. I don't know how big a print you have it, but if you zoom in, you'll see there's uh, 15 foot utility easements along the right away. That's for the water and sewer infrastructure. You can find if you have a full size. Yeah, there you go. So for example, if you look at page four, adjacent to McKay Court, for example, you'll see a, a dashed line around the water line. Oh, I see it. The easement. There's, 
the, the only real easements are utility easements and then easements for stormwater facilities, but they are all shown on the plan. Okay, yeah, because stormwater management is going to be a key issue. Are there any other questions? Any Thank other? You. I'm sorry. Any other comments? If not, um, Commission, what's your pleasure on this? Are we ready to? Uh, take a vote to move it forward subject to all the requirements that's already stated in ordinances. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I mean, I, I'm not actually, I mean, I, I would, I mean, I, you know, to receive this stuff on a Friday evening and then uh, a slew of other things, you know, the morning of the meeting, and then to say that I've had a chance to review it to see if it conforms. I mean, I, I couldn't honestly say that. So I, I like for these plat reviews, I, I, um, I just feel like we need a little more, a little more time to actually look at them. And there's a lot of things that, that are supposed to be checked off. So I don't know if it's possible to delay it till the next meeting, but I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't vote to move this forward at this point. Other commissioners? I, I agree with Jason. I just, you know, I'm working. I didn't, I have the ability to re review everything. And when I got off work today, I saw there was a bunch of documents in my inbox um, that have not been reviewed for this. Any other are, comment? Um, Go ahead. Are we, Mr. Chairman, are we having a, a second meeting this month or is our next meeting in September? I think we'll probably be having a second meeting in this month. I mean, I can't so, say that at this point because we haven't got to that part yet, but I think we got enough work that we need a second meeting in this month. And uh, we'll have to well, modify so, the agenda then because it shows the next meeting is September 3rd. I, I know, but that's uh, number 10 and that we can use that second month. We can use that second meeting in a month if we have to. So. We'll just, we'll just um, announce that when we get to it. Uh, members of the Planning Commission, this is Mike Dardane. I'm counsel to the applicant. Uh, under the applicable ordinance, the Planning Commission is required to review this within 45 days of completion of the administrative review. The completion of the administrative review occurred on May 7th when VDOT issued its approval. So we're already beyond the 45-day deadline. Um, you know, I... I I appreciate that you'd like to look through the, the, the packet of information that you have, but we're already well beyond the deadline in the ordinance. And as Mr. Lansing has informed you, this is a ministerial act and your staff has indicated that uh, the submission checks all the boxes. So I'm not really sure what's to be accomplished by, by delaying it further when, when, when you already are uh, beyond the, uh, the deadline set forth in the ordinance. Sir, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. Uh, My name is, the name is Mike, and the last name is D-E-R-D-E-Y-N, and I'm an attorney with Flora Pettit in Charlottesville. Okay. And, and, and I would just like to encourage the commission to take the matter up. Sir, hang tight. I'm going to get to you in just a second. I, I promise you I am. But you kind of, you kind of burst in while the, com the commissioners were hashing it out a little bit, so... Just give us a second there. Mr. Lansing, based on what um, their attorney is saying, what advice or comments or consideration you would have for the commission? Uh, I wonder if I can ask him for a code section uh, that he's referencing or if Sandra wants to jump in either uh, for the 45 day deadline. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, allow you all to chat back and forth for a second, um, but to try to help us out here. Thank you. Um, it's, it's section, we're looking at the, the, the pre-April uh, 25, 2018 ordinance, okay. section 54-66G, uh, entitled Planning Commission Review. It says the Planning Commission shall review the preliminary plat within 45 days of completion of town agency and administrative review. 
Hmm. All right, let me let me throw something out here. Yeah, let me say something. I, I just you know, given our um, efforts to comply with um, our COVID nineteen response plan. I mean, there is not much we are absolutely current on as far as review deadlines. Well, hold on a second. Just, 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 for the sake of, just for the sake of transparency, I, I feel like I need to admit that and to say, you know, we are moving things forward as, as quickly as we can. And it, it uh, communications have been complicated in various ways. So I just, uh, he's correct. I mean, we, we do have deadlines and he's, that we have not met them, yeah. um, but I think that consideration needs to be given to our uh, pandemic situation. And Sander raises an important point because the continuity of government ordinance that we're operating under has told all deadlines. Right. Um, if you guys would like, I will just I will take a, a second look at that ordinance just to make sure that it would apply to this situation. Um, but I believe it would toll any deadline, including this one. Um, Mr. Lansing? Yes, sir. You're, you're on the right road because I was trying to interject here before they all, they, oh. and so I ask that uh, be identif identify yourself and then let me tell you to speak before you speak. It helps us all here because I think um, we do have some uh, COVID guidelines that extends deadlines in all governmental structures. So let's make sure that we are not, um, before we admit we're violating something, let's make sure we are. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm reading from it now and I can read it out loud if you would like, Mr. Chairman. Well, uh, if you would just kind of tell us where you're going so the other attorney can catch up to sure. where you're reading from so that he can see what it is. Um, okay, and at this point, I'm gonna let the two attorneys pass it out just for a second here, and then I'll. When I say stop, though, guys, I need y'all to stop. <laughs> sure. Uh, so uh, what we're dealing with is a code section in Title 15.2 um, that allows for the Board of Supervisors of any county to adopt provisions for the continuity of government notwithstanding any provision of law uh, statewide or local. Um, and so operating under that uh, enabling legislation, the Board of Supervisors on April 28th uh, adopted uh, an ordinance to effectuate temporary changes in certain deadlines and to modify public meeting and public hearing practices and procedures to address continuity of operations associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. So under that ordinance, uh, it says, um, be it further ordained that notwithstanding any provision of law, regulation, or policy to the contrary, any deadlines requiring action by a public entity, its officers, including constitutional officers, and employees of its organization shall be, shall be suspended during this emergency. However, the public entity officers and employees thereof are encouraged to take such action as is practical and appropriate to meet those deadlines. Failure to meet any such deadlines shall not constitute a default violation, approval, recommendation, or otherwise. So basically it's saying that in light of COVID-19, deadlines that normally exist under county law and even state law uh, are waived by this ordinance. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lansing. And that, that certainly sounds like, uh, I mean, I'm not reading it, but it certainly sounds like that's what that ordinance does. So, and I, and I recognize that this body can defer this matter if that's what it wants to do. I just would encourage the, this group to take action because um, this is a, uh, this is an off, this one is, uh, this is an old one and it would be nice to, uh, to, to move forward with it. And, and the applicants are anxious to do that. I, I uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I mean, so there's three motions that could be made, right? We could make a motion to approve, a motion to defer, or a motion to deny. So I'm, I'm willing to make a motion to defer. I'm not willing to make a motion to approve. So um, I, I feel like that's pretty fair. And so with that, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to defer this issue to the next 
to the next meeting, which hopefully will be in, in a couple weeks, just so well, we can actually have time to look at it. I'm not going to state your motion for you, but put that uh, date there and let's see what happens to the motion. I'll second that yes. motion. Uh, this is Hutch. The uh, Mr. Chairman, the, the date, uh, when would be the date for the, uh, the interim meeting? Is it two weeks from now? Two weeks from now, it'd be the 20th. Okay, then, I, then I'd, I'd make a motion to defer this issue until the till an August 20th planning commission meeting. That's, that's, that's seconded. So it's been moved and seconded that we defer this until the August uh, 20th uh, planning commission meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hi. Chair votes aye, but I didn't hear two other eyes or nays. Aye. Aye. All, right. all, all, all who are opposed say aye. So I heard no opposition to it. So I'm assuming that everybody voted um, to. Um, Mr. Yancey says nay. Mr. Yancey says nay. Okay, now I know I didn't hear a voice somewhere. All right, Mr. Yancey says nay. So it's four to one to move to uh, August the 20th and get it off our agenda then hopefully. Okay, we're gonna move toward our public hearings. I'm gonna defer uh, to uh, Mr. Lansing to uh, right after I make a comment to give us a couple housekeeping comments and re uh, state uh, the COVID guidelines uh, ordinance and then we're moving to our first SUP for the night um, 20-02. Before we start our public hearings I wanted to say that the Orange County Planning Commission and Orange County our efforts are always and always will be to be open and transparent. But the guidelines from COVID and the, the testing from COVID, not necessarily physical testing, but the testing of the continuity of government and the opening of government and the closing of government has really tried uh, the test of this county and others. We, I, the chair and others, have followed the guidance from our legal team, the county officials, and any other information we could get to move public hearings fastly, swiftly, with no biases, prejudices to anyone. This statement is being made because there's a few underlying questions about things we have done, meetings we have changed, dates and places. These were done to accommodate the best activity of county government for Orange County citizens, not to favor anyone. And if anyone knows of any favoritism that has been displayed by the County Commission of Planning, please let me know and we will address that. We do not want to be a part of any favoritism, prejudices, or any other unnecessary activity. We thank you for your patience during these times. And I ask Mr. Lansing to give us the ordinance before we go into our SUPs for the night. Uh, Mr. Chairman, are, are you referring to just citing that the hearing is being held in compliance with the ordinance as the ordinance requires? Yes, sir. Okay, um, uh, that's what I mentioned earlier. So I think it's good for the whole meeting, um, okay. but I can just, Restate. Would you restate it again, please? Sure, yeah. Um, this meeting is being held in uh, compliance with ordinance number 200428-6A, uh, which we are referring to as the continuity of government ordinance, an ordinance to effectuate temporary changes in certain deadlines and to modify public meeting and public hearing practices and procedures to address continuity of operations associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and uh, it requires us to state at the beginning uh, that it's being held in compliance with that meeting 
uh, that uh, the, with that ordinance uh, to identify the public members physically or electronically present, which the chairman just did a moment ago, and to identify the persons responsible for receiving public comment, uh, that's Sandra uh, Thornton who received them, uh, and to identify the notice of the opportunities for the public to access and participate in such electronic meeting. As I mentioned earlier, uh, that opportunity was by written comment to be emailed or mailed to Ms. Thornton. And that's all I need to say to comply with the ordinance. Thank you, sir. Okay, we will open the public hearing on SUP 20-02, Orange County Resort, LLC. Uh, Mrs. Thornton, you're up. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to uh, just read the staff report. Um, as you all know, I mean, all, all of the materials today have, have been late getting to you, so I'm going to read through the report. Um, as in the staff recommendation section, um, the Planning Commission could consider approving the special use permit, provided it is satisfied that the proposed conditions address any potential impacts of the proposed use uh, may have on neighboring properties and land uses. The Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors may modify, remove, or otherwise edit these proposed conditions as well as add other conditions as deemed appropriate. Um, it must be noted that a portion of the proposed project area, while situated in Orange County, straddles the county boundary line and is under the jurisdiction of Spotsylvania County. We understand that the applicant has contacted Spotsylvania County and will also be required to speak appro seek approval of a special use permit under that county's zoning regulations. This report focuses only on the portion of the project area that is under the jurisdiction of and taxed by Orange County and referred to hereafter as the subject property. Staff has pointed out to the applicant that the county's current zoning does not support their stated goal of subdividing the property into small individually owned lots. They have advised that they are considering a condominium type arrangement and wished to proceed with the special use permit application. Accordingly, this report will evaluate the proposal as a recreational vehicle park which reflects the special use request as stated on the application form itself. So just as a summary of the application, this is a special use permit application submitted by Orange County Resort LLC for a 250 site recreational vehicle park described as a high end motor coach resort. It appears that approximately 70 to 95 of the proposed 250 sites would be situated on the subject property. The subject property is undeveloped and most of the area is currently densely forested. The proposed access to Route 522 is not marked. And when I went out to do a site visit, I was unable to locate access off Belmont Road. So because I, um, did not find a way to get to the property itself. No photographs were taken during that visit. Um, the subject property is currently buffered from Route 522 by other wooded parcels. The general area is sparsely developed with some residential and agricultural uses in the vicinity, buffered by significant expanses of wooded land. The southern boundary of tax map 74-22 is located approximately 955 feet from the Pamunkey Bridge. It does appear that the current zoning applied to this parcel is its historic zoning. Um, concerning community input, the public hearing notice for this special use permit application was advertised in the July 23rd and 30, 2020 editions of the Orange County Review. Adjoining property owners were sent notices via certified mail on July 24th, 2020, and the public hearing notice sign was posted on Route 522 near the property on July 29, 2020. At the time this staff report was written, some written comments had been received and forwarded to the Planning Commission. Application review committee comments were solicited via email on June 18, 2020 and the comments that were received are as follows. From Richard Jacobs, Conservation Specialist, Culpeper Soil and Water Conservation District. 
uh, a site plan in compliance with the erosion and sediment control and stormwater management law and regulations is required. A no disturbance riparian box setback should be incorporated on all tributary streams to Lake Anna. This setback should be measured from the top of stream bank and be at least 50 feet. The restrictions of the riparian setback should match the restrictions of Spotsylvania's resource protection area. Fueling stations and waste disposal areas should be 100 feet away from the tributary streams and 200 feet away from Lake Anna. These areas also need appropriate spill containment systems such as perimeter controls and filters. Clean surface runoff should be diverted away from such areas. Avoid disturbing steep slopes over 15% or six to one. These slopes should be protected by preserving ve vegetation and diverting or dispersing runoff. From Aaron Kane, Orange County Director of Public Works, the proposal shows the campground in both Orange as well as Spotsylvania. Our solid waste ordinance allows only the landfill to only allows the landfill to accept waste generated within the county. Any waste generated on the Spotsylvania side will have to be disposed of elsewhere. This applies to both commercial and residential users. Collection sites require proof of residency to use. In this case, if a lot owner wanted to use a collection site, they would have to fill out a permission to dump form that would have to be approved by me. This would have to be done annually. This would not be an issue if the campground has a commercial trash service. The two collection sites nearest the proposed location are not compactor sites and capacity is limited. An additional 250 users may create the need for more frequent servicing of those sites. Again, not an issue if there is commercial trash service. I'm from Mark Wood, assistant resident engineer and area land use engineer with the Virginia Department of Transportation. I mean, his communication noted that these are considered preliminary comments. Based on the information provided in the application, VDOT concurs that neither right nor left turn lanes are required on Route 522. Given the recreational vehicle use of the site with watercraft access and or camping, VDOT requires a minimum 50 foot radius on each side of the proposed commercial entrance on Route 522 and an entrance width of 30 feet to the end of the entrance radii. The entrance width can be reduced starting at the end of the entrance radii as per county planning, fire and rescue or emergency services requirements. The proposed commercial entrance on Route 522 shall meet the intersection site distance requirements based on the posted speed limit, 55 miles per hour, um, which requires 610 feet. Height of I is 3.5 feet located 14.5 feet off the edge of pavement to an object 3.5 feet tall located in the opposing travel lanes. Provide a site plan and profile of sight lines on the site plan. A VDOT land use permit will be required. And we did um, hear from Chief Jeff Mendonca of the Mine Run Volunteer Fire Company. Um, and he indicated that he had no issues or comments concerning the proposal. Uh, regarding uh, potential impacts, in granting a special use permit, section 70-141 of the zoning ordinance states that the planning commission and the board of supervisors shall consider whether the proposed use would further the purposes of the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance, whether it would threaten the public health, safety, or welfare, whether it would be compatible with its surroundings, whether it would impact the environment or any natural scenic or historic features, and whether it would result in a substantial detriment to the surrounding property. So, um, Concerning zoning and, and uses, um, the property is situated in an expansive area zoned agricultural near Lake Anna and Orange County's boundary with Spotsylvania County. As previously noted, the area is characterized by agricultural and very low density residential uses in close proximity to the lake. Um, concerning the comprehensive plan, the subject property is located in an expansive area which is uh, designated Agricultural One on the recommended future land use map. The purpose of the A1 land use category is to quote, protect the rural, agricultural, historic and conservation areas of the county 
by preserving open space, limiting population, and allowing little or no development other than agricultural and forestal enterprises, farm markets, homesteads, and larger estates. And that's taken from the Orange County uh, Comp Plan, page 25. The proposed use, including the RV sites and associated amenities, would be considered more intense than uses generally contemplated for the A1 land use category, although there would be some preservation of open space and buffers. Um, concerning impacts to public health, safety, and welfare, the proposed use would be expected to generate additional traffic on Route 522. Um, concerning environmental, scenic, and historic assets, there are no significant historic assets in close proximity of the proposed use. A tributary stream forms the northeastern property boundary of tax map 74-22. Otherwise, there are no particularly environmentally sensitive features on the subject property. The applicant has indicated that an environmental inventory will be conducted during the design phase of the project and any approval should be conditioned upon analysis of such an inventory. There has not yet been assessment of soils capacity for on-site treatment of wastewater, nor has the impact of development of a potable water system been evaluated. Again, information concerning water supply and septic and wastewater treatment is necessary for a thorough evaluation of the proposal. Uh, compatibility with surroundings. This proposal may be, may be generally compatible with the surrounding land uses, provided that the applicant adheres to conditions as may be proposed. The, um, and just a restatement of the fact that any conditions may be modified by the Planning Commission Board of Supervisors. Um, concerning impacts to county services, as previously described, the proposed activity could have significant impacts on the solid waste handling capacity in the area unless commercial waste management is offered. Uh, no significant physical impacts are expected in association with the proposed land use, although some additional tax revenue would be, be generated by visitors to the area. Uh, with respect to transportation, the proposed use would be expected to increase traffic on Zachary Taylor Highway, Route 522, uh, particularly uh, by large vehicles or with large vehicles. Nevertheless, the Virginia Department of Transportation at this time has expressed no particular concern with regards to significant impacts on public transportation infrastructure. Potential improvements to the intersection of routes 20 and 52, or 522 are under consideration, although it is unknown at this time uh, when such improvements may be implemented. Um, and then I, I just note that it is customary um, with this, the these types of applications for staff to recommend um, conditions at the time the staff report is presented. But um, I think because of the particular circumstances associated with this proposal um, involving pending approvals from a neighboring jurisdiction and pending questions associated with how the sites will be conveyed to potential owners, um, I have not attempted to draft a complete list of proposed conditions. Um, we also are, will be recommending that consistent with the, the board's practice um, under the continuity of government ordinance and um, the Planning Commission's uh, uh, public hearing related to a, a prior special use permit, we will be recommending that the public hearing record remain open until your next meeting to allow citizens um, time to comment. Since with our, our shift in the meeting format tonight, um, citizens were obviously unable to participate live in the meeting this evening. So I would think that um, by ho hopefully we will have a little more information by the time of the next meeting and um, we can offer a, a proposed set of conditions. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, is the applicant uh, here? Yes, sir. And would you do me a favor and state your name, your address and your position with the company? And if you're the only presenter or you're gonna have several presenters and we're going to limit you to um, no more than 10 to 12 minutes on your presentation. Okay. Um, great. Well, my name is Trevor Kimsey. 
I'm the director of engineering with Gay and Neil, uh, serving with this project team, and I am uh, located at my office right now, 1260 Radford Street, Christiansburg, Virginia. Um, as part of the presentation, we will have uh, Lonnie Carter and Gary Griffith both um, sharing with me in that presentation. And I guess at this point, I need to coordinate with Mr. Clement. We have a PowerPoint that we wish to present. Larry, can you do that? Hey, there it is. Yes, sir. And um, and if you can kick that thing into presentation mode, we'll just get rolling here. And I was, um, tell me when you're ready, Mr. Clement. Is everybody, while they're getting together, seeing the presentation? Anyone not seeing the presentation? I'm not. I see a blank screen. Okay. Well, it's it's not up yet. I, I mean, but there's a big gray box where it's supposed to be showing up. Yeah, I see it with the pointer, and and that is prepared to be open. Thank you. Yeah, we're seeing a large gray box. No, no slide. It was up there before you went into presentation mode. Uh, now I see the alternative slide, but um, yeah, it went on. okay. Yeah, it doesn't like the presentation mode for some reason. It's freaking out. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I can see it now. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're, it's it's um, and we can roll with it like this, Mr. Clement. If they just kind well, of. It'd be nice to get your presentation as you have ready to present. If we have just a minute to try to get it to open up. Yeah, I don't know why when it went to presentation mode, it was not showing on our monitors. You could just hit play from the beginning. Did it stay? Yeah. That's it. I see it now. Right. Full screen monitor. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now we're happy. If, if everybody's ready, I'll get moving since... 12 minutes is shorter than I was hoping for. So we'll have to, I apologize for how quickly we're going to go, but we can. We thought we had, we timed everything to 15 minutes. We thought that's what we had, so. Trevor, Trevor, take, yes, 15, take 15 minutes and it starts now. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Clement, you can advance the slide. Um, <clears throat> and we will, uh, I'll just introduce the team again, uh, briefly. This one, the development team is, um, the Oregon is Orange County Resort LLC. That's really the Wills Company as a partner for this, <clears throat> represented tonight by Lonnie Carter, whom you'll meet in a little bit. Dockside Development, Gary Griffith, who's with us, is uh, really a, a longtime advocate of the project in the community and is part of this team. And I am, of course, the engineer. Uh, advance. And let's do an overview of the application. We're going to start with um, my portion, which is really the facts and figures about the project. Go ahead, Mr. Clement. <clears throat> um, one correction here, the timeline we submitted, it actually left my office on the 8th of May. It, it stamped in at the county offices May 18th. So really May 18th, the middle was received at the county. The process began bringing us to the planning commission tonight. And then uh, of course we're, we're where we land on the board of supervisors. So that's kind of the real simplified timeline. You can advance. Um, the project as you've already heard covers three um, and go ahead and advance one more time and one more time. Thank you, sir. Uh, covers three parcels, um, <clears throat> two of them that are in the tax tax records of orange, those lower two on the screen. Uh, for this slide and all the rest, north is to the left, um, putting 522 at the bottom of the screen. Um, and then the third parcel <clears throat> is that one um, that uh, 58 acres, it's got the green line across it. That's the approximate boundary line and that's already been addressed for that reason. We've already begun this process with spot RC meeting coming up next week for that spot, uh, special use permit process. You can advance, sir. And has been already touched on this property is zoned agricultural um, A1 and uh, future land use. Um, we, uh, we recognize that um, the luxury motor coach resort is not a um, permitted by right use within the agriculture, but we do see that 
county does uh, point the needle a little bit towards the bed and breakfast, the short-term lodging facilities. <clears throat> um, but most importantly, we, we note that this is not a rezoning to something that was not uh, allowed. This is just a special use permit in the special use permit designations of the uh, county for agricultural is the ones listed here, camp, campground, recreational vehicle park, commercial recreation usage. So we fall in that kind of category. So we feel like we are, um, we really are a, a use that was anticipated to be allowed within um, agricultural. It's just that it needs to be looked at carefully um, with regard to the things that Mrs. Thornton already addressed, impacts and whatnot. Um, regarding the future land use, um, we really do think this piece of your A area most of your A1 area is not uh, flanking Lake Anna, and this is. And for that reason, we feel like where we're going with this is actually a great highest and best use for um, this unique parcel. Um, so please advance. Thank you. <clears throat> um, briefly, um, what the luxury motor coach resort? It's a, a high upper end uh, group of motor coaches, gated community, operated by professionals with standards enforced throughout community rules. Um, has recreational amenities inland and on the waterfront. And you'll note we applied optimistically looking for 200 to 250 um, sites for those motor coaches. Um, as we've worked through a number of things, um, wetlands, streams, soils, wastewater, grading. Um, the reality is we that was uh, too optimistic and we're landing in the 150 to 175 um, motor coach uh, sites. So, um, that brings a lot of these numbers back down, but we feel like as you walk through, you'll see this makes for a great layout. Um, next slide. And before we go any further, really what the what this is not is really important. So we're framing this in all of our minds correctly. This is not your typical campground. It's not just a KOA stop in for the for uh, ten bucks a night. This is a. Uh, it's not open to the public. It's not a playground. It's not a permanent housing uh, place. It's not a problem for law enforcement nor a burden on your county resources. So, um, so let's walk through the park. I'll zoom in a little closer and just kind of navigate you through. If you can advance the slide once, Mr. Clement, we'll uh, drop in. Uh, coming off of 522, um, in all of VDOT's items in consideration coming off of 522 <clears throat> with a new entrance. And um, in there, you'll begin to see it. You start with uh, entry and a guardhouse motor coach sites along the um, stream, I mean, the ridges, stay on the high ground out of those streams, um, only stepping over them where we have to and limiting our impacts. Um, and then we have inland recreation area, pool complex, picnic pavilions, courts, clubhouses, and a, a really a nice trail. Um, you can advance again, Mr. Clement. We'll go out to the waterfront. Um, out at the waterfront, <clears throat> uh, we really want to showcase Lake People come and see what this is about and, and enjoy the beauty you all have there with boardwalks and piers, a variety of boat slips, um, picnic pavilions, uh, a general store up high up, not down on the water, but high up on the ground, um, a trail network, golf parking, um, and a lakefront swimming complex. Thank you. And then the rest of the parcel really fills out with the rest of the motor coach resort sites. Also, you'll see um, uh, distributed bath and laundry facilities throughout um, and a network of trails woven throughout. Um, again, staying out of the streams. All right, I'll keep going so we can watch this clock. Uh, advance, Mr. Clements. Thank you, sir. Um, transportation, it's a private road network internally um, with access out from 522, um, as they've already pointed out, just north of Pamunkey Bridge on 522. We've already run through the turn lane analysis and uh, will not be required, but we will finalize that as part of the land use permit application with VDOT when site plan is complete. You can advance. On site, we will have a private water system, well treatment, storage, and distribution so that all sites have water. Um, same thing with sewage, we'll collect it by centralized uh, treatment and uh, disposal um, site, distance well back from the lake, all right? And we've already done soils work on that since the beginning, um, since the application went in. Additionally, uh, since the application was submitted, we've now done um, wetland and stream delineation in that process. Process through with the Corps of Engineers and the DEQ to finalize that. 
Um, and so we are working to keep the design out of those streams and out of those wetlands and those environmentally sensitive areas. And likewise with the terrain, we're working hard to um, not, we're not coming in and flattening this site, top of the ridges to keep those landforms and make this an elegant solution. You can advance. And um, we've already touched uh, in the staff report, we are buffering the adjacent properties. We're trying to keep away from putting intense land uses up against the neighbors. Um, and ultimately we've kept our developed intensity down to half of the, the land, um, uh, just trying to stay out of areas. We're, we're only really impacting about half of the property. You can advance, sir. And finally, we wanted to put this in context because this is, has been pointed out when considering this sort of thing, we really have to see um, what, what are the special impacts about this special use as compared to the buy right development. And um, this 82 acres could with um, 41 single family homes we won't talk about duplexes, that would be another story, but um, interestingly to note, the two big questions, um, traffic will be very similar. At peak hour usage, this traffic will be very similar to um, 41 home development. Uh, but interestingly, the water, really the sewer, the concern about sewer, um, the sewage impact is actually considerably less. Division Probably about half when you're talking about nitrogen loading or um, E. coli uh, potential. Um, that one's even better. So this development has actually a, a much lighter touch on the land than uh, the single family home or the uh, development would by right. So uh, we can advance again. I think I'm going to turn this over to uh, Lonnie and let Lonnie uh, share with you about his vision. Can y'all hear me? So if, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to thank Sandra and Tracy. They've been putting up with me for a little over years. Uh, this thing has evolved and um, we're going to, yeah, thank you, Mr. Uh, Clement. Personal introduction, uh, I grew up in Richmond. Lake Anna was a place we went. It was our resort, and I grew up, and my parents built a house from Heckinger's you know, every weekend and Morgan, too, which was in Mineral. I've been able to develop in all three counties, and uh, quite frankly, I fell in love with Lake Anna. And my kids, I come down every weekend, and now I'm down here every week, and uh, I think it's important to know, even my history with Orange, not just the other counties, is uh, my sister was a special needs teacher for Orange. My uh, dad lives in Gordonsville, and uh, I have a lot of history there, and I think that's uh, important what you're going to hear going forward. Um, uh, as far as uh, the transformation to give you a little background of who we are, the Wills Companies is a third generation developer that I've had the pleasure to know for years. And we've developed at beaches in Delaware. We've developed a lot of different places. And one thing I have been proud about what we do is we always try to uh, look at a piece of property or a future opportunity and, 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 and do what's best for not just the, the community, but the generations to come. So we looked at this property first from Gary was as a residential. We build probably about 40 homes around the lake, every homes. And, you know, I looked at this as being a, 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 a next community for us. Sometime, my younger son has autism. So sometime during that, we went on a trip and we went to an RV resort that was pretty amazing. Was And it opened my eyes to some opportunity. And, and at the same time, selling homes, y'all know that we're going through a paradigm. Um, the people trying to go to the lake, especially, uh, I call it dream local, uh, I think it's a special opportunity for a lot of people to enjoy the lake at the same time, not putting burdens. Cause I, you know, I love how the lake is, you know, during the week being on the lake is like, you know, like the weekends are for rookies. So I found, I started going to these motor coaches and, and going with my family. And I just, what I kept noticing is how many families were laughing and how, how, how much fun they were having. And so I started researching the motor coach opportunity. And, and the more I researched, the more I got excited. You can go to the next one. Um, and why I got excited, how, how these things could be like a, you know, almost like a five-star resort for, for people that want to be going around the world. And, and, and then, you know, it's better to be, time is better than, being, uh, you know, lucky, being smart. I will tell you that I started really learning a lot about 
these parks. And what I would like to say is, you know, we want this one to be a luxurious high-end motor co coach clientele. Uh, we want it to be self-contained, uh, like a, almost like a gated community and a resort-like experience. Uh, Trevor talked about, you know, how we went from 250 to 150. We're looking at this from a generational view. A lot of people to be able to share it. So when we did that, we brought in a national, uh, a national consultant that's done this for years. And, 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 you know, he's given us a lot of great advice. I think Sandra can tell you from a year and a half ago from the dream, you know, I did RVs for dummies and then I, I graduated to like you. And, and so I'll tell you a little bit about these places, what I've noticed, Thanks, Mr. Clement. You know, you have the manicured lap landscapes. These are the pictures I actually took um, two weeks ago with my son. We went from, uh, and my wife, from Dollywood, Pigeon Forge. This is in Tennessee around the lake. And it's called Anchors Down. And, and what I noticed, it, it was so many families. I saw so many different golf carts. And it was just, they had the opportunity to enjoy the lake. And not only they had the opportunity to enjoy the lake, they, they were enjoying their families. So the next one, what I did see is they had a professional staff. I came in, they were talking to me, had a little general store feel, the bathrooms and everything. Unbelievable. The bathrooms are nicer than most of my friend's house. And uh, I will tell you the pavilions and the meeting areas and the, all the, the, the things you would want to have bonding, but at the same time, the social distancing, since these are, but, it gave a lot more people a chance to be here than just people that own the homes. And they were from a demographic that, you know, really appreciated it. Good background. Next, Mr. Clement. Um, what I would like to see, I'm, I'm retiring at the lake. I bought a piece of property. Uh, I own a house now that my parents had, and I've owned it and my kids grew up. The only thing changed in that house was the pictures in the picture frame. But this is a, a legacy thing for generations. This is a thing that I would like to contribute on a small part with this whole team that I've been fortunate enough to have to the lake. And, and at the same time, having a lot of experience, not making, having this opportunity to be realized. And it's building generations of experiences for families on Lake Anna, as it says right there. I think I thought about, I, I actually said that today when we went through this. Next, Mr. Clement amenities for all ages i went to watermark camp through my church and i will tell you you know the zip lines there's so many things you can do self-contained and we really took that in account when we were planning all the different areas if you look at the roads this is a lot more exciting than doing 42 homes or 41 homes on the lake this is exciting because we're we're, we're doing it right and we've done the research and and the games and everything is just it's everything I saw. Like I said, these are these are pictures that you know of, of families and, and fun that I saw. So the next one. So the vision is really uh, knowing Lake Anna, knowing the history of Lake Anna, knowing that you know how far we've really come, knowing that right now I will tell you as a home builder, <laughs> I get about four to five calls a day. I'm building about 38 homes at Lake Anna. We also sell at the beaches. People are going. And there's a paradigm in life right now. And I think Lake Anna could really uh, assist families in the future, generations to come to, to be able to enjoy the lake without putting that impact. I live in Gainesville. I've had, my kids went to five different schools because the, <laughs> and it doesn't put in the burden. So we can go to the, we can go, and it gives all the recreation of a lot of uh, high-end resorts. These are the visions that I saw taking pictures that day uh, last week. These are very, very yeah, nice spots. Thing. And I will tell you that I, all I would like to see the lake, talk about him. instead of doing another yeah. neighborhood, this is something that's not even, I think the closest one is Hilton Head of the quality we'd like to keep. And you can go to the next one. It's This is the first time I've ever done a Zoom meeting in these. I've done a lot of them, but I will tell you that, um, we worked very hard over the last year and a half. We love, you know, we love working with all the three counties around the lake. Sandra said we 
been talking to Spotsylvania as well, but tonight we're with Orange. And um, I just hope that for the next few months we work together to really, I think, have a special opportunity here. And I'll turn it over to Gary. Thank you. Um, is it okay? <laughs> You're good. Uh, yeah, just a couple of quick things. I, I, know, I realize we've ran over the time limit. But all, I, all I wanted to direct was that the property, uh, to talk about the property just a little bit, and Lonnie's pretty much directed the quality of work we do. I've done 15 communities around the lake when I was asked to come in and get involved in this one. Stonewall, the boardwalk where Tim's restaurant is, Sunset Cove, Magnolia Harbor, Twin, Twin Oaks, just to name a few. Uh, I don't want to get involved in something that's not a real quality product that's going to turn out. I'm, I've got a great reputation and I'm not going to let anybody hurt it. So I, I put a lot of time into looking at uh, how I can involve myself in this project and, and see it come out. But my relationship started with Mr. H.Q. Dickinson, who owned this property. It's been in their family for over 200 years. And I would meet with him. He was in his 80s and uh, help him out with a few little things. He wanted to sell a couple of properties off. Uh, off. He really cared a lot about his land. And when he passed, the land went to two of his family members that owned this. And, and Mr. Hayden, who, who owns this property at currently, was uh, worked this property with Mr. Dickinson and uh, took care of it, took care of him. And now the property has been entrusted to him. When the lake went in, they lost a lot of land uh, that they were farming that had a good income on it. And the pittance that they were paid at the time, uh, they could have made that money off of that same land they lost in a five year length of time of farming it. But the benefit that they were told was by the lake coming in here, your property value is going to increase. It's going to, you'll be able to capitalize on the use of the lake and that's going to offset the loss to the land. That was a big understanding that was presented to everyone. So they thought about it long and hard on what to do with the property and to, to be a good ward of it. Um, Mr. Hayden's wife, who has some health issues now, uh, they looked at a way to generate income off of this property, uh, made a decision if they cut a portion of it off that they could generate the, the income they need, capitalize on the part of the lake, keep the rest of the property and um, continue using it as, a, as their open space. They, uh, they spent a lot of time. We did a lot of talking, went on over two years on how to, what could be done. And when this idea was presented to them, they think it's a great use of the property. It's gonna give a lot of people the opportunity to enjoy a portion of it while they still sit aside the balance of the farm. So it isn't like some haphazard thought of just, hey, let's just do this. A lot of thought, a lot of time's gone into it. But the most important thing is this family, again, had this property for 200 years. They lost, the benefit is the, they lost a lot of it. The lake came in. They see this as a good way to utilize their property generate an income that'll help them out of a situation that they're in at the time. And um, we looked at the concerns, we had VDOT uh, support it. We know a lot of people would like to see all the property left in, in agriculture. It's a rural area, but when the lake went in, that changed that a little bit on the properties that front on the lake. And it, it, and, and it offers such a great opportunity uh, for this family and for the for the area itself and, and for using the lake and for tourism. So we, as representing Mr. Hayden, uh, would really like to see you consider allowing them to do what they would like to do with the property. Years and years of thoughts gone into this, uh, a lot of struggle with wanting to separate the property. When we did it, we took into consideration where the Orange County, Spotsylvania County line is and put the property line there, knowing there was a discussion about redirecting the line. And we created it where a straight line from Spotsylvania could come right to the water and, and make this a, a, an Orange County property. That's still in the works. That may or may not happen. The hearings are coming up. 
But with two properties, two of the properties exclusively in orange and more than half of this other property in orange, we just really feel like that the county will benefit from it. It's a, a tax gain, it's no drain, no school children, upscale uh, participants using it, uh, very little draw on a f the fire departments or uh, rescue squad. So I, we can't think of a better use for it. And we hope as we get an opportunity to come back and work with the staff, we've seen concerns people have had and we wanna direct all of those. Um, different, uh, as I go through the application and read it, some of the, the uh, comments and concerns there, we feel we can direct pretty much every concern that has, come, that, that has been mentioned at this point and fit into the community. So we really hope you give a good consideration to, uh, to Mr. Hayden's use of the property and their family's use the, uh, and give us opportunity to work with staff to make this a really great project in Orange County. And I really want to thank you for your time letting us present it. Thank you. Anything else from the applicants? Not until you have questions. Okay. I just like to say, Gary, thank you. Mr. Hayden, thank you. Okay, any questions from the commission? Hang on to them just one second. I, I want to ask Eric a question before we start. Can we um, can we open this back up for public comment for uh, at Sandra's recommendation based on the information that it had not been out there very long? Uh, yes, we can. We can open it up for public comment. I'll, I'll ask Sandra to jump in and back me up on this, but yeah, I believe we can we can hold the meeting open under the continuity of government ordinance to receive written public comment at our next meeting. I'm not sure that addresses the question. That, that does address the question. Okay. Based on hearing that commission, what's your pleasure? I'm not saying we're not gonna ask the applicant questions, but I wanna make sure that the public is listening know that we have uh, taken care of that. And I think it's a rightful issue that's been raised by uh, a couple comments we've got and the staff. Um, Mr. Chair Chairman, I, I mean, I definitely think um, that we need to, we need to have some time for public comments. Okay. I concur. Are we able was that Mr. Capel? I, I couldn't get you. My screen hadn't came back yet. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Chairman Brooks. Yeah, this is uh, Jason Capel, District 1. I got um, my screen back now. It tells me when you're talking, but I hadn't gotten back there yet. All right. Uh, Hutch, go ahead. I think you had something to say. Yeah, I concur with that, uh, giving more time for public comment on this because July 23rd has been a little short. Uh, in addition, I've got a bunch of other questions. Sure. So I will um, entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir, Mr. Yancey. Uh, yes, this is George Yancey of District 2. Um, I also have some very serious concerns. Number one, um, I respect VDOT's uh, opinion. However, based on personal knowledge and experience, um, you know, having a uh, turn lane and a diesel lane uh, for vehicles going in and out of this proposed facility to me is critical, number one, and an above board, a very much a safety factor. Uh, we just had another death on that road just in the last couple of days. Uh, that's issue number one for me. Issue number two is a, some type of hydrological study showing that there's adequate water source. Mr. Yancey, Mr. Yancey? Yes. In title of those, we're trying to clear up this, extending the uh, public comment just a second real quick. Let's, let's. I, I have no problem extending the, the okay. public comment period, but there are some other issues that needs to be brought back to the commission because in essence, in my personal opinion, the package is not comprehensive. Um, it would have been great to have had this, the uh, 
overhead presentation uh, that uh, the gentleman from Will's company just provided should have been provided prior to the meeting tonight. Hey, George. And, George. Yeah. George, hang tight on all of that. I'm gonna get back to you on all of that. I want to clear. Right. I want to clear up this uh, public comment uh, thing first. So, based on the consensus of the commission, can you give us, Sandra, a date that you would think that would be acceptable for the cutoff of public comment, and then we can go back into the rest of the hearing. Um. Yes, sir. I would think, um, let me just check the calendar. I know the date is the 20th. I would think that the, uh, I'm going to recommend Tuesday the 18th, partly because, you know, we don't, don't know uh, how many comments might be forthcoming and we i mean I, I would i'm guessing that in two weeks we will probably still be meeting remotely yeah i'm saying that's adequate time and do we need a motion on that mr lansing or can we just uh do that uh as by consensus uh we can do it by motion you you can do it in your capacity as chair uh motions are always safer than chair decisions, but I, I would suggest that when soliciting public comment, whether you do that by motion or in your capacity as chair, uh, you may want to consider a word limit in there uh, in, in soliciting public comments. So we're gonna take a stab at this at, from the chair position. We're gonna um, extend the public comment until August 18th, limiting the comments to one page and no more than 300 words. Um, for this particular SUP. And we're going to try to use that for the standard until we get out of uh, this COVID-19. So 300 words, one page, uh, for this particular one, and if you would, Sandra, just make 5 p.m. the time cut off. Yes, sir, we will do. Um, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Uh, yeah, Jason Capel. Um, you know, I, I, I agree with limiting the word count. I do. Um, you know, 300 words is, is not anywhere near a, a page. I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, I, I, I have like a, I have about two thirds of a page up here at um, 12 point font and it's, it's 500 words. I'm with you. So, I, I, so you suggest I would double space, sorry, Mr. double space, 14 point font. Uh, what are you suggesting then? Well, I, I, I mean, if you want to give people a page, I, I think you would need to do at least 500 words. And we probably should bear in mind that there may be at least a few people who choose to mail comments that, that are written, handwritten, as opposed to occasionally we'll still get something handwritten, not often, but. So if I say no more than one page, that'll cover everybody then, wouldn't it? Well, you just, you deal with people, uh, not people, you, you, you Mr. A... Chairman, <laughs> you, you could deal with some, you could deal with some really, really small text if you go that route. I, I would recommend, I think the word count's smart. I, I just think 300's a little, a little shy of, of what it should be. I, I would recommend, you know, one page, actually, it, I would just recommend 500 words, honestly, if you're going to limit it, because one page at eight point font is a lot of words. 500, 500 word limit, then we'll go to the 500 word limit. Um, but I want to leave that one page in there. I don't want uh, uh, folks sending me diagrams and, and all these things they want me to look at in, in, in uh, addendums. 
like I've got on a couple of them here. Uh, you know, I just trying to the, the it's easy for someone to poke and say you're not doing your due diligence, but when you get 500 pieces of paper to read and you got to work every day, it's it's pretty exhausting there. So 500 words, one page, um, and we'll we'll keep that as our standard until we get out of this. How about that, folks? 500 page, 500 words, one. Um, one page and we'll keep us our standard throughout the COVID-19. Uh, so I'm going to back up and adopt, ask for a motion for that so we can adopt it as a procedure. How about that, Mr. Lane? Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm sorry to be a, a nitpicker, but uh, are we going to say per person? Per person. Right? Like one person gets one page, yeah. 500 words. 500 words, one person. And I understand okay. their husband and wives and this, that, and others, they want to sign the same page, fine. Um, but if, and if they send me the same letter twice, fine, I've read it. But we'll just, we'll just stay there. Mr. Chairman, can we say one letter per, per household? We, well, I thought through that, but the problem with that is, what if you got a different opinion in the household? I, I think we're going to get into some equal protection issues. Yeah, I, I think you. <laughs> everybody in the same household don't share the same opinion. If so, my kids would have cleaned up before I told them. <laughs> they would have done it yeah. all there if they shared the same opinion. Besides, besides that, Mr. Chairman, if if I have a different opinion than my wife, I'd still like to send my letter. And if it's one per household, she won't let me. I would make it anonymous. <laughs> I, nothing's reached my level. Let's get, back, let's get back to the game because we, we've got a couple more quarters to go here. I solic solicit a motion for one of the commissioners to uh, have our standing comments during the COVID-19 uh, guidelines to one page, 500 words. So moved. Mr. Hutchinson moved. Is there a second? I'll second it, Mr. Uh, Chairman Brooks. Mr. Capel second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Your votes aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Now we can move into the um, questions of the applicant. Um, so I would, I would say this on set here. After we finish this SUP, we will be taking a break because we've been going about an hour and a half and I understand humans. So we're going to start right at the bottom of it, as that District 5 go, District 4, District 3, District 2, and District 1. So Mr. Hutchinson, you go first with your questions for the applicant. Thank you, sir. Uh, first question I've got, is this going to be an HOA? Not really. It, it will, we will have uh, guidelines and covenants restrictions for use, but to establish an HOA, we would be um, a selling fee simple and assigning property. So it'd be more of a management agreement. Well, but you've got to maintain common property, I assume. Yes, and it, and it it'll serve the same purpose that an HOA would with its guidelines, and uh, it'll probably be a little stricter than most HOAs would be because it gets into more of the use of the property. So you'll have a general manager and a financial manager. Yes, uh, and I and I'll weigh in a little bit here. Uh, visiting all these places and working in some of these other municipalities, they've even worked with the county and the county attorney is that. You know, it's no matter if it's rental or owned, it's all with the restrictions and covenants. And we've gotten, we've been able, fortunate enough with the uh, nationwide um, consultation, we've been able to see a lot of those. And that's how, that's how you govern it. So I don't know if you call it HOA for sure. That's a homeowners association. No. Well, I, I understand the covenants and the regulations and, and the requirements well, to do that. Uh, 
what is ownership going to look like? Can, can I can I just finish the comment on the HOA? Those HOAs are a uh, state regulated guideline. You incorporate the associate the HOA association, and I don't think will fit into those guidelines for incorporating a property owners association because of the way it's going to be ran. Not that it's not going to be regulated very similarly, and I'll let someone else take that, but the, um, it, it just doesn't fit into a category to be an HOA. Well, the, the state has a POA for the Property Asso uh, Owners Association, but yes. uh, how is ownership going to be handled within this development? I'll leave that to Lonnie. Well, <clears throat> right now, you know, we've been studying it in other municipalities, and this is something that came up and I was discussing with uh, Sandra and others. Uh, there is no county of, for, for County of Orange, how to do this. Now, other municipalities, um, municipalities, like a condo regime, other things to create that ownership. What I've seen, especially after visiting uh, many of these, if it's ownership or even rentals, it still has tight restrictions and also how they, how they, uh, the rental ones usually have four night minimums. They're about $159 a night, but they have the rights to, you know, inspect the vehicles and all come in. But at the end of the day, they're very strong. Uh, if, if it's going to be fee simple, orange, we're going to have to figure out if that's going to be a condo or how we might move forward. So you, you haven't figured out yet how you're going to handle ownership if, and, and, and in rentals. Let me, hey, Lonnie, let me say this. We, we have a plan how we want to handle it. Uh, but we want to be sure as we work with the staff, there's questions that have come up about that as far as allowing fee ship, uh, fee, uh, simple. simple ownership, I'm sorry, fee simple ownership or uh, long-term leases. That's something we feel like we really need to work with the county staff on to see what that uh, is recommended, mainly because we've seen some comments that saying it shouldn't be, some of the people saying they don't think it should be fee simple, fee simple ownership. We're open to work out the use and the assignment of the properties to what the the staff and the, uh, and we're still working with comments feels the best way to handle it. Well, I, I can tell you from my standpoint, I I feel that it's imperative that this commission and the board know how you're going to handle uh, each property, the lots, uh, how we're going to handle taxes, etc. Yes, yeah. and and our plan was to work with the. Uh, during this two week interim that we assumed something along that line would be set up. And as we got feedback to sit and work through, but let me, it sounds like Trevor's got the, the Yeah, I was just going to clarify, you know, if you haven't picked up on it, there's been a lot of um, discussion about options and, um, and if application came in reading that we would sell, um, hearing some of the feedback and the, and the um, hurdles and obstacles that, that would create um, and also researching some of these other parks uh, opportunities. We, we basically, at this point, the traditional moving forward approach is actually a lease arrangement. It gives the Wills companies, the investment group behind this, the, and Lonnie, the ability to control the quality of what they're dealing with. So while there is you know, a lot of background discussion, like, wow, what, you know, what might that have looked like for sale? What could that someday deal with? At this point, the property and the project is moving forward um, on a lease basis um, that would maintain ownership of the entire park under uh, one controlling ownership. And can I, can I add just one little thing in that? But I don't mean to keep you laboring it, but one of the reasons in the very beginning we talked about it being fee simple, which is what we've seen in a lot of areas, is it creates a huge tax base because each of those sites get valued in the $100,000 plus range. So each one of those sites would be taxed as a fee simple site. So the way to create the largest tax base for the county 
was to set it up as feasible ownership. And that was the only reason we looked at it. And we've seen that had been done in some of the areas, but we're not hung up on that. That was more what we thought would be the best benefit to the county. Is that what you're favoring? Well, look, I, Gary, if you don't mind, because is that what we're favoring? Well, like Gary said, at the very first, most of the ones we were doing, looking at the tax, looking at the whole equation, we thought that fee simple would be the best in talks with the county and working with them, you know, there wasn't really a vehicle at this time to get there. And, and then we had to make a decision, you know, how do we move forward? And then after I started looking at both fee simple and leasing, they both controlled the environment and, and, and the quality very well. And there was advantages to one, there's advantages to the other, but economically, which we all have to make sure we're, we're thinking of, both work both work so we're open to we're open we're, we're we're flexible to go either way and be able to manage it properly I, I think that's the most direct answer so yeah but i think just Bye. i think mr hudson just to make sure y'all have one thing to consider because i know you probably want one scenario to consider i think the consideration on the table is a leasing arrangement one owner one leasing arrangement one owner leasing arrangement. Yeah, the, the developer would own and manage the property and lease the individual sites. Which means you'd advertise for different RVs, motorhomes, et cetera, to come in, which would have an impact potentially on the traffic based on say a weekly stay, or I, I don't know. Certainly, whether they be leased, sold, or, or, or anything, uh, yes, we hope they're all full and we hope they are um, being used. And yes, they will generate the traffic. And that's been part of the subject of what was used to analyze per VDOT standards, um, how to analyze the entrances. So yes, sir. And Mr. Hutchins, just to elaborate on that again, you know, even if we leased it, there's covenants very tight. And, and over the next two weeks, I'm excited to share them because I get excited every time I see these things. You know, there's four night minimums, you know, it, it, Really, as far as the traffic's concerned, it's not really a different, you know, be different from either or. And in the best interest, I think we have an opportunity here over the next two weeks to really get into that. Um, I don't think it's settled here. I mean, we didn't even, it was hard to figure out how many words to put on a page, but I will tell you, we will dig in deep. But we, as far as moving this project forward, we're willing to do either or, whatever's best for aligning goals. Well, I'd like to know which way you guys want to go on this. Uh, I re well, uh, yes, sir. And with much respect, we're willing to go either way. <laughs> on a, we're either to do it willing either way with total cooperation with the county. Right now, if you ask me, would we like to put a condo regime and figure it out tonight and go fee simple? We, we're willing to look at that. But right now, I don't think we're in that position until we we have that uh, vehicle to move forward. Okay, how do you define high-end motorhome RVs? The good thing is many examples for it. And again, we don't have those slides to come up, but we have many, many covenants, POAs, restrictions, all these things. That's how you really govern it. And, and you have a management company, no matter if it's rental or fee simple, you're still leasing these out. If, my wife has taught me most of this. We're watching these go RVing shows and we're watching these uh, going to these shows and really doing a lot of uh, research. And, and, and what we see is it's, it's what's your expectations and inspecting it before it comes in. But every one of them has to have a call in reservation. They do different things and different mechanisms. Well, I understand that, but you've defined that this is going to be used for high end motorhomes. How do you define high end? Well, you, you know, at one point we had recommendations that it would be nothing older than uh, 10 years and certain classifications. You know, we, we even gone to the RV associations. There's certain ones that there's that, you know, would be stipulated not to be in. Well, I, I understand. I mean, class A is good, but high end says you can get up to 400, 500,000 or more for a motor home versus uh, 50,000. Can I direct that a little bit? The, the idea is that it is, as Lonnie said, following suit to other sites we've gone to in the Smoky Mountains and 
I mean, some of the sites that we've gone to, they're they're selling for three, four hundred thousand dollars for a site. They're bought by people that uh, leave Florida, for example, and come and spend the summer further north. But the uh, the way they establish it typically is the age. They can't be more than ten years old. Um, so the guidelines are, are based more around that, not the dollar value spent, but the age age of them. Obviously, you couldn't do pop ups or things like that. So they don't make the class A RV because there's tow behind toy haulers that are four hundred thousand dollars as well or three hundred. Right. So so it's geared more to regulating it by the the age of the vehicles that can be brought in and used and then they get inspected uh, yeah exactly at, when they come in they're inspected and if somebody's you know bought a lease the site the rv got t-bone in a wreck then they're going to be given time to get that taken care of so the little things work out but it's basically going to be based on the age of the equipment and then it's going to be limited to uh style like hey. no bumps, no things like that. It's going to be typically drive behind motorhomes or upper end uh, tow behind RVs. Mr. Hutchins, what I'd like to say, and it'd be my last comment on this, I think, is it's almost like an architecture review board, you know, hey, at the gate. They, they will represent a certain quality and, and, and meet the guidelines because I've seen some 1920 buses being fixed up very nice, you know, cost $400,000 and nobody would put out. The human element would come in at that point with a strong management company and a strong uh, agreement with the regulations, so. Okay, are you all going to incorporate commercial trash pickup? Incorporate court- uh, Commercial trash pickup. Well, you know, I think that would probably be, I mean, just like I go up to the recycle center right there near Dickinson's all the time, we would have, um, I mean, and as you go, hey, through, as Johnny, you go through, can I interrupt you there just a second? Yes, sir. It will have on site commercial trash service, dumpster type service, where the individuals are not trying to take the trash to a, re, to a recycle center. As pointed out in the remarks on the review, a concern was part of it's in Orange County, part of it is Spotsylvania. So the trash. So, the people who were camping at Spotsylvania couldn't bring the trash to exactly Orange County Recycle Center, and the people in Orange County couldn't bring it to a Spotsylvania County Recycle Center. So the solution would be, and it's it's how it's commonly done anyway, is you hire a commercial company to put on-site dumpsters in, and uh, then you can either establish how you operate it by having uh, an employee that picks up their trash and takes it to the dumpsters, or you give them the designated site and then it's handled commercially. And those commercial companies deal with different counties to pay for disposal. So yeah, we would, we would not have all these people running up and down the road to different recycle centers, dumping it. It would all be handled on site. And you can tell why he's my developer. I just build the homes and he keeps me straight on all those things. So thank you, Gary. Well, uh, well, my next my next question uh, supplements Mr. Yancey's concern, and that is uh, having been a RV owner of my own in the past, uh, you have uh, extreme differences in turn lane issues and site issues with long RVs, particularly those towing boats, uh, POVs, whatever. And I'm not sure that uh, what was stipulated by uh, uh, VDOT is going to be sufficient on 522 to handle those size uh, vehicles. Uh, all right, uh, point point taken. I think um, I don't have the the report in front of me. We can go back and dig into it, but I do know um, that VDOT does establish for larger, slower vehicles. There are um, particularly for sight distance consideration when pulling out of an entrance, um, there can be slower speed, slower pullout speed, and therefore longer sight distance requirements. So um, during this kind of next couple week period, we can research that and um, confirm that it, in fact, is not 
been overlooked by VDOT and that we're in compliance with all of that. But uh, they do have provisions to make take that into account, whether it's school buses or um, motorhomes, uh, et cetera. So, well, and Mr. Hutchins, not only the motorhome itself, but they're going to be towing something. Absolutely. A lot of them are so that they can, uh, particularly boats for use on the lake, which will have to be registered with the state of Virginia because that's a public lake. And also uh, uh, the length of, the, they're gonna use those uh, vehicles to go to visit tour sites and shop and whatever. And so you're gonna have a much longer vehicle, longer than the RV itself. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson and, and Mr. Yancey, since he brought it up, uh, I travel down from from Gainesville, you know, almost every day and I commute when I'm coming down if I'm not staying at my house and my son comes down cutting grass and everything. I, I certainly can appreciate the 522. So if, if, if it needs to have turn lanes and that's what the uh, consensus comes, then, you know, we're not trying to do anything other than we got a VDOT recommendation at this point and we will be working with the county over the next two weeks to answer all these questions. And I think that's, um, I think that might be an answer for a lot of this stuff. Well, even driving through mineral coming up the other way, there's some rather sharp turns. Well, you know, and, and you're exactly right. I mean, again, I, I mean, I got a 19 and 18 year old son, so I definitely care. We we're also fortunate enough to do another uh, uh, project in, in uh, Louisa, you know, a commercial one, and we're working with VDOT 522. Like I said, we're going to dig into it. We heard the VDOT recommendation, but we're not going to do anything to endanger our kids or anything. So I think that's something we can do together and talk about, but we're not going to be, uh, we're not trying to get out of doing anything. I, understand. To I just place. wanted to surface the issue because I don't think it's sufficient and it needs to take another look. And that's, and I respectfully, uh, I hear you. Listen, one of my last question is, uh, just for your consideration, uh, I live at Lake of the Woods, which is an HOA. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our covenants, but we also are required to have an emergency evacuation plan, which includes the nuclear energy plant at Lake Anna. And it seems to me that you all will probably also have to consider establishing something like that because you're well within the zone. Nobody else does. I definitely heard you. Okay, that's all the questions I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hutchison. Ms. Zellmaker, District 4. Julie. Um, Julie, you're up. <laughs> Hello. She had to go to the restroom. Yeah, I don't see her on. <laughs> She's on. <laughs> there she is. Julie, you have any questions for the applicant? Thank you, Steve. Not having the turn. Go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Julie. I think you muted it. Mute. I can answer that one. Hold on just a second. I didn't hear the question. Say it again for me, Ms. Zellmaker. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can. Say your question again. Okay. Um, so for the the entrance in the gated community um, with the road being 55 miles per hour, uh, is it going to be difficult or do you see kind of like a traffic jam with these larger vehicles and then having to stop at the gate and blocking the road or causing, you know, if people are coming through at 55 miles per hour um, and there's no turn lane or something, I, I could just see that that being an issue. Um, hey, I, uh, I'll have a quick comment and then I'll let Trevor, but one, uh, if you've looked at, if you've gone out and looked at the area, it's a long straightaway through that area. Our traffic stop for people as they pull in is well within the development. So they don't just turn off the road and stop. They turn off the road and drive 400 feet or more, more, more than the length of the football field. And that's where the stopping area is staged. That is a one of the reasons VDOT thought it was fine is such a long straightaway there that you can see what's taking place. And then we will request uh, an opportunity to put signage coming both ways, letting people know 
that there's the entrance to the RV. And, and the reality of it is, is if we were contemplating this being a, a 41 homes or whatever it would be, I mean, these RVs are coming even no matter what. I mean, they're coming in for a few days. They're not taking the RVs in and out on it. So I would, you know, the traffic actually would be much less than uh, impact on 41 than 41 oh. um, just by the nature of the business and what I've observed across, you know, visiting several of these RV resorts. Yeah, but your point's a valid one, Julie, and I think Gary addressed it well. The, the stop point for entrance control is far enough in away from 522 so as to allow several of these units all to queue up. And of course, operationally, I think that was be something they're trying to avoid. Um, there's also been discussion on our site plan of actually creating sort of a, a pull off so that we can actually queue up several of them within the site out of the driveway itself. So um, we'll be making sure with our site plan to address those concerns. Yeah, we okay. do. Okay. And 522. The other um, question I had is I saw that there was going to be fuel uh, sales on site and um, I didn't see that in the presentation. Could you go into more information on what that fuel station is going to look like and the environmental impacts? Yeah, I'll, I'll let Gary address this because it's more of a boat issue than um, we, we do not intend to be selling um, fuel for the vehicles on site. It was more an issue of um, uh, boats and fuel. Um, so Gary, you want to address how that's typically done? It, th this was the, the thought was that in for boating and a lot of boating boat warranties say you have to have ethanol free gas to use in your boats. Since we're on a lake, it was a service we thought we could offer for the boats to be able to fill up the boats and use the lake. It's not uh, a mandatory thing that we have it. We just think it would serve the site better. And right now, your closest gas that you can get from that site by water is about 10 miles one way. So we were just looking at it as a convenience for the site. That's something we would have to have approved by uh, Dominion Power, the health department, and the EQ. Uh, the EQ to do that. That's something we would like to do. Uh, whether we would be able to get all the approvals, uh, take all those steps, we don't know yet, that's early on, but we would definitely like to be able to offer that and just be a real convenience for people They don't know where to go. And also we'd keep those cells instead of getting in their boat and riding 15 miles away and or 10 miles away and 10 miles back. It just keeps that on site and keeps it in. in. We make the profit there in Orange County. I mean, that's the deal. Any other questions? Um, I don't have any other questions right now. Thank you. Okay. Look, I have a few. Most, some of them have been answered. Let's start at the back and work forward a little bit. So, approvals given this property is built, and 10 years down the road, the RV market does what it typically does. It, it just crashes, nobody's buying them. Now we got concrete and, and things sitting there. What's what's the answer to or the remedy to uh, pulling this stuff out once it's there? Well, let me, let me say this. That's not the history of, of these RV sites. I mean, if you go back and look at them, very few RV sites ever convert to some other use. Most of the time, they, they're successful. There's just a, there's always a growth in, in that market. So I, I'm not sure where your uh, statistics are coming from in a few years when people quit using them, but um, the sales may go up and down. Right. But the use of these sites are consistent. I don't know of a single one that has been set up and changed other than uh, in heavy resort areas where the land has become so valuable that it's it's like buying a, a house that was built and on a site and it was underbuilt and they buy it to tear down the house to increase the value. Um, I have a motorhome. I've had 
I'm 68. I know I look like I'm 35, but I am 68. <laughs> And I have owned from the time I was probably 25, some sort of RV or camper. The first one was a pop-up that I had to put in the back of my truck and haul it to where I was going and then unload it. <laughs> but um, I moved on to camper and then the class C's and the class A's. So I, I do a lot of motor homing and going to different sites. And I, I really, I, I can't think of a single one that has changed other than where the area grew up around them and they could no longer, the value was just such that they couldn't maintain it. They had to sell it to be high rises or whatever. Well, aren't you speaking to the typical, and I'm just using a name where you say sites, you KOA and those type of sites that you're speaking to, because there's not a lot of these high end sites around that, that I could really find. So you're speaking to the history of like this site wouldn't allow you to pop up in there. This no, site, I know that. I, I was like, just, I, that was more sharing my experience. Yeah, but hang on a second. Hang on, hang on a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There was a delay there. I'm sorry. You're fine. So, so I understand your experience in there. So let me share with you just a little bit. I, I lived on 522 for 32 years. Um, I used to make money off my brothers counting RVs and both colors going down the road who would pick the color. I um, helped HQ Dixon get up hay on his farm when I was a little fella. So I'm very familiar. So you can't you, you can't quote me to the area. I know the area very very well. Um, yes, I know the lay of that land very very well. So yes, I'm not a novice to it. I'm just trying to move along with what we have here. Um, well, you're sitting here directing HQ's uh, cousin, who is his caretaker there. So you guys know each other, probably. I get it. So I, I get where you're going here. I just want to let you know I know that area. I have the concern of the traffic, and I know you've addressed it, but I'm gonna bring it to a point. We've changed the entrance to the Lake of the Woods, which is a 55 dual lane highway about three or four or five times, and it still backs up there um, because of what Mrs. Uh, Zellmaker was talking about, how do you get them off the road? Um, and, and that's my concern with towing that Mr. Hutchinson had. I, I think that you need to push in a little bit further than 400 feet. Four of the motorhomes you're talking about would pretty much take up your 400 feet with the gap in between it and mm -hmm. how people drive and things like that. And we all arrive at the same point at the same time. And, and Murphy will show up at your entrance like he shows up at everybody's entrance. And, and when I'm talking about Murphy, I'm talking about Murphy's law that he will show up there. I thought it was my brother you were talking about. No, no, no. So, so, so basically, I want you to, to, to look into why you think in a couple of weeks some some expanded room at that entrance. The the next question I have is that, and you didn't answer it for them, but so a person, what do you think the annual income is going to have to be for a person who comes there? I mean, we, we, we've got to have a standard here or we'll be importing everybody in and, it, and, and, and because if you think that income or their worth has to be four or 500,000 that they can afford, then all everybody will come in. What benefit will be to Orange County? Because if we don't get taxes or something, how will we get any, what benefit would it be to Orange County if, if the Orange County citizens can't enjoy it in any way? Well, I guess a couple of things there real quick, just back to the entrance. And that's what we want to work with staff on and make sure everybody's comfortable with. And like you said, you've been here a long time on 520. You, you, you're aware of Christopher Run. There's never a really big deal of people coming in and out of there. It's a huge campground. Uh, it's not as regulated as what we're talking about. So we know we can put things in place and work with the staff and your concerns to get that entrance where everybody's comfortable with. Okay. okay. We are controlling the cost uh, or the clientele coming in just by the uh, the, the economics of how this site is set up and all of the costs of the amenities, when people are coming there, they're, they're not going to be coming there for $30 a night. They're going to be coming there for $150 a night 
how they spend their money as much of it as possible will be on site we hope but the orange uh, the orange county's potential for revenue is going to depend a whole lot on how the uh, conveyance of the right to use them is handled I don't know how all the taxes work. If you could tax them, where are you going to put your store? Where are you going to put your store? Orange County side or the Spotsylvania County side? I think as it's drawn now is on the Orange County. That's a Trevor question, though. Uh, well, there we was would a... love to have it closer to the entrance, but we were trying to move the activity away from the entrance. Go ahead, Trevor. I'm sorry. Okay, hang, yeah. hang on, everybody. Everybody, hold on just a second. Hold on, everybody, hang tight. Uh, Sandra Thornton has lost Karen at her house, so she's no longer with us. She'll try to connect by phone as soon as she can. So just bear in mind, we're having a terrible storm and things are going south here pretty quick. I just wanted to make, I just got that note handed to me. All right, move on. I'm sorry to cut you off. Well, can I say one quick thing? So, so yeah. this would be the time to say that Sandra Thornton said she's very behind this project and she thinks <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know what? And I want um, to show you yeah. my 12 acres so you can put that stuff on. <laughs> uh, next question we have is... Um, but go ahead, Trevor. Uh, well, we, well, go ahead, Trevor. Well, you were you were asking about where the location of the store was. There's probably a couple of different places that actually takes place, whether the general store is more by the inland uh, pool complex. I think there will be a snack shop and sort of... Uh, sales office there. There was also going to be a little store, kind of snack shop down near the point, which is closer out over the location of that uh, county line. Um, our others would be to bring that whole parcel into Orange County, but where it stands today, there would be some some point of sale activity on both sides of that current line. Well, the, the, the imperative part of it is that if you put everything that's for sale in Spotsy, Orange won't be happy. If you put everything for sale in Orange, Spotsy won't be happy. And we really don't have any shops on that end uh, or stores on that end that folks go to before they get to unless they do it back up in the Unionville in there. Uh, so, so I'm looking for the benefit there. I don't have any questions at this time. I'd like to say something. Could, yeah, well, one second here. If I could do ask for two two opportunities. One is just real quick. We know there's an alignment happening on the Spotsylvania County Orange Line or propose. When they proposed that, our property line wasn't there. Now it's just a, a definite straight line mm -hmm. to separate this and we're in hopes that we can work out something with Spotsylvania County where when they adjust that line, this all ends up in orange. But what I really wanted to ask you to, Mr. Hayden is here, the owner of the property, and uh, he would like to make a comment if he could, um, based on your questions. Go ahead. With the, uh, the tax, the money that you're planning on getting out of this. I mean, Orange County is a very historical county. It has a lot of draw to it with Montpelier and you know everything that's going on in Orange County. There's a lot of businesses and restaurants there. These people are going to be looking for something to do. They're not going to want to spend all their time on the lake. They're going to go take a day trip, you know, go find things to do. And granted, they will do a lot of it in Spotsylvania County, but Orange County has more draw historically than Spotsylvania. And that's in my opinion. Okay. All right. District two, Mr. Yancey, go ahead. George. Mr. Yancey, go ahead. Would you ask questions and comments? Yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, first of all, uh, can you disclose the location of other similar RV parks in the state of Virginia? that you plan at this site? I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question, sir. Are there similar RV parks in any other location in the Commonwealth of Virginia of similar uh, nature? Of this nature? No. And and you can do Google searches like uh, afterwards. We also can send you a lot. But no, in Virginia, 
And even the East Coast, uh, there's probably about 10 to 15 on the East Coast that uh, are fitting what we envision. And and across America, though, they, they, they a lot more are on the West. And um, but nothing in Virginia that resembles this. Most of them are North Carolina, Tennessee. Uh, most take advantage of either mountains or lakes. And um, I could certainly give you a list. I have a long list of ones that that are, are very similar that I could share with you guys over the next two weeks and would be happy to. Please provide those. Yes, sir. I mean, and, and your, I have, your, form, your formal uh, presentation in the um, beginning would certainly be good if you could provide that as well. Yes, sir. Uh, my other follow-up question is, um, number one is I mentioned earlier a hydrological study. And the reason I asked that question is you've got an enjoying property that has a residential home on it that is, uh, had to go 350 feet in order to get a gallon and a half a minute. And when the water was tested, it had sulfur in it. So I think from a financial standpoint and a prudent business people, uh, you might want to consider doing that study to determine whether or not the site can hold all sir. these 250 units. Yes, sir. And, and respectfully, I will tell you, I mean, that's where I think we, we as a group, uh, our strength is <laughs> we've over the years done a lot of this. And one thing we do up front is making sure that it's economically viable at the same time, working with our neighbors and the citizens and everyone to make it work for everyone. So we've put a lot of money already into this property, checking not just the water, but also the septic and laying out the roads. And you'll see, we, we went in with 250. Could we get 250 sites in there for sure? Um, but we're, we're looking at all that and, but we have done those tests and over the next two weeks, we are uh, happy to share it so we can work together. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Next question. Um, it would be, I would think prudent also to have a second ingress egress offer 719 and that recommendation is from the consideration that the closest fire rescue that you have to you for that site is going to be the Belmont Fire Department Office 719. Yes sir. So therefore they can arrive much quicker than Orange, excuse me, um, Mine Run from the Roadsville station or from the Mine Run station. The uh, second part of that is from a standpoint there have been numerous occasions that Route 522 has been blocked by an entrance, uh, accident. So therefore your residents may not have the ability to get out of their facility if they want to leave by only having one entrance. So yes, sir, I will tell you, I mean, I, and I'll, let, I'll defer to everybody after this, but in developing, fortunately or unfortunately in Northern Virginia, you know, that's a big thing, making sure fire trucks can get in, having a second entrance, always providing a safety for all the people. So certainly uh, all those things would be considered and very good points. And uh, I will have to defer to Trevor on how we do that. That's what we pay him for um, by the word. Lonnie, our property doesn't front on 719. You have a right away. He was, I think he was talking about back interest for you emergency. Have a, you have a 50 foot right away. I think so. No, sir, I, we don't have a right away to 719. We have one to 522, uh, entrance is 522. So to establish uh, an entrance on 719, we'd have to acquire another piece of property. There might be a misunderstanding there somewhere, but there uh, well, it, it, it comes that up. That information, and there's yeah, a house. No, dis there. no disrespect to anybody, but that information came from two former supervisors of the Orange County Board of Supervisors. Okay. So if they told me wrong today, oh, I, I, I retract my re statement. But my point being is if 522 gets blocked, 
and your folks can't go anywhere unless they got to go south. Yeah, so. And yeah. That, I would say this though, that that's uh, ideally if we had property on both, we would definitely want to use it, but uh, that, and I'll go back to, which is not in Orange County, Christopher Ron, they're all 522. Uh, they've been there for almost the longest Lake Anna and um, to our knowledge, they haven't had a, an incident where they couldn't get traffic in. You do have, you could have the road blocked in, in, in one direction like that. And that would, situations happen. But right now we don't own access to uh, 719. Yeah, Mr. Yancey, okay. I suspect, I wonder if the um, if the references from the previous uh, members of the board or the commission were speaking of the parcel, uh, Mr. Hayden's parcel before it was subdivided in 2017. In 2017, that, that whole parent parcel probably did have access over to 719, but when the parcel was subdivided in 2017, creating what we now have in our hands here, uh, this current parcel does not actually anymore have access of uh, easement back to 719. I stand corrected if that's fact. I, I don't okay. know for- We'll do, I we'll do the due diligence to check. Parks office to do the research. Yes. Uh, and that brings me to my last question. Uh, the applicant says it's Orange County Resorts LLC. When I go to this the Corporation Commission website, I cannot find where it is a viable um, corporation that's on file with the State Corporation Commission at this time. Why is that the case? Well, so we had to have an applicant name and at the time we put Orange County LLC or uh, Orange County Resort LLC. Um, so we, we haven't incorporated that particular LLC and quite frankly, that won't be the marketing name. We haven't we haven't come up with one. We have several we could share with you, but maybe we'll share over the next two weeks. But it's just that it was for the applicant name. Well, in, in conclusion, I would say um, I'm not sure two weeks is an adic adequate period of time for you to do the, this remaining homework for this project. But, you know, I'll defer to the chairman to determine that. Well, what I'm saying is you. the LLC has been formed to, to own it, but, you know, DBAs, we do it all the time. And unfortunately, in the world we live in, or fortunately, uh, we have a lot of different LLCs. I think we have an LLC that's, uh, mm -hmm. that we can move forward with, but we're still thinking about a marketing name. Well, I understand that, uh, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're fine. Mr. Capel? Mr. Brooks, could I insert a comment here? <clears throat> I know this. I know there's a lot of questions, and, and we're trying to answer them as fast as we can, and out of respect for time. But you raised a good question. I think got partially answered. You were asking about what's the benefit for Orange County, and and what if the folks in Orange County, if many of them can't, don't have the the you know the pay to play in this game, uh, what's the benefit for the county? And I think one thing that really didn't get driven home was the um, <clears throat> the property tax on the park um, and then also the 2% hospitality tax um, that does cover campgrounds. Those are um, key, key parts of revenue generation, at least for the county, uh, without the corresponding um, uh, tax burden of schools, et cetera. So I just wanted to add that to the mix before we keep moving on. So thanks for letting me insert that. While you bring that issue up in the next few weeks, kind of give us uh, an estimate of revenue for that. That's because we, we have to have something um, as commissioners to balance things. Yes, sir. Yes, understood. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, Chairman Brooke, I what I would add is I've already called some of the owners of these different parks and some of them own multiple ones. And I'm trying to get all that data for all our benefit. So I will tell you that we will share everything we have over the next two weeks. We have done a lot of research. So I know two weeks doesn't sound like a lot, but if we can get those things to you pretty quickly, I think we can all work together. And that's what we really want. So thank you. Well, that's what any good business person does. They look at the balance sheets. <laughs> that's, that's, hey, I yeah, teach my, yeah. my, my, my son's having a hard time in calculus, but I tell him, you know, one plus one equals two. 
and explain to me like a first grader and I get by with a lot of things doing it that way. So thank you, sir. I hear you. Mr. Capel, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for uh, presenting and coming here. I, I know uh, I know this uh, costs money. I can see you've invested some time and, and uh, money into it. Um, just, I have more comments than questions, right? So, I mean, first of all, like I read the packet before the meeting, but what's being presented isn't, doesn't really match with the packet. So it talks about sites, but we're not sure if there's sites, uh, maybe lease, maybe fee simple, um, there's less. Um, so, I, you know, I, there's just seems to be a lot missing and I understand you're looking for flexibility, but I, I just want to comment to the rest of the commissioners, you know, there, there's at least one store here. I've heard snack shops, fuel stations. I see swimming pools. I see, uh, potentially, um, I see, uh, showers and bathrooms and I'm looking at a map that just has blue blobs on it that says any of these things can be in any of those locations. And so, you know, I'm looking at the ordinance here and, and we're applying for an, an SUP for an RV, but you know, there's also SUPs for retail stores, uh, gas stations. I'm not even sure are allowed in agricultural property. So, you know, from my point of view, guys, and, and look again, I'm, I'm sensitive to what you're trying to do and I understand the money, but you know, there, <laughs> there's way, way more information missing here than, than, than is provided. And um, so I, I mean, I'm not even sure what we're approving except sort of a blank slate for you to do kind of whatever you want in these blobs. Hey, Supervisor and, Capel, I, I definitely, let me speak to this. I could definitely appreciate that. And again, we're all learning with this new format. And usually we're standing all together and looking at each other and not doing these things. We've done a lot of this and it's hard to get all the information to you. Uh, well, it's definitely been a challenge, but all this information is definitely available. And I think that's what we all are in agreement for the next two weeks. We can supply this. I mean, if, if, if you're thinking that we're trying to do something other than RV resort, I will tell you that's definitely not the case. No, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not thinking that at all. I, I'm, yes, what I'm saying is, is I don't know what you're doing. Okay. I see well, RVs. I, I see stores. I've read a lot of construction plans in, in my career. And, you know, I just don't see the detail here that any of us would need to really make a decision. I assume you're going to have lighting, for instance. I don't see anything on lighting. I don't see anything on landscaping. I, I don't even see really a, a road plan for 522. There's just a lot of stuff missing. And, and, and listen, and, and I also understand it costs money to generate all that. So, you know, from my perspective, I mean, the idea that, that in two weeks, this is all going to get settled. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't really see that happening. Well, Supervisor Capone, so, what I would say it, is that you all have a certain format that, that we had to, you know, put, and we submitted this a while ago. We've been doing these tests, again, as, as businessmen. You have to make sure of what you have before we even get this far. So, so I was throw something in here, Lonnie, real quick. The, uh, it's always a work in process, progress when you're getting a site plan and a site plan done and approved there's a lot of details to be worked out and there's a lot of we wish we could do here where we may find the gas the gas may be something that's just not uh that doesn't work out doable but at this stage it's it, it is concept because if we present this idea to you and and the response is absolutely not all of those details really would be new points. It's more of our concept and what we would like to do on the property. And if, if we're on the right track, we spend our time working with, with staff and they seem to think it would be a good thing. And I think they, they kind of leaning towards recommending it. But then as we work with the planning commission, 
you guys are going to give us your insight of what you would like to see. And those are adjustments that we need to make. And then when we move to supervisor, hopefully, we're going to be given more uh, guidelines and desires if this is going to happen that has to take place. So there are a lot of details that aren't there yet. It's, 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 it's the concept. The health department is going to work with us on water, water quality, and water quantity. It's a transient water source. That requires the permitting for that is, is much different than someone just building a house and putting a well in. We have to not only show we have supply, we have to prove it. We have to go through 72 hour drawdown tests mm -hmm. on well to see if we maintain our static level or we don't maintain our static level. And then they want to see double what we really need being provided. And they're not going to let us move forward or approve anything, but they're not even going to start working with us until we get somewhere along the line of a conceptual approval. So it's a step at a time. And I guess what we're asking is to provide as much detail as necessary for is this a concept that we'd be allowed to do? But before we could do anything, we have to move through site process. We have to move the, the site plan approval, the health department's approval. Uh, again, further evaluation from Department of Transportation. If you saw that, it was a preliminary approval. So they may require more. Each of those departments will, will take every, this issue on, but most, most of them don't want to be involved unless they think that the county is going to let us do it. Why would they waste all that time? And then it's not a waste of money on our part, but we could spend a ton of money on things that we're not even going to be doing. So we're kind of at that stage of a good solid plan with a lot of research with details that will be required as we move forward with the site plan approval. So we're trying not to get the cart before the horse, but get it and all the information and answer your question. So we I, 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 I understand, yes, but, but this is this is not a, a site plan approval. Right. This is a, right. a special use permit approval. And yes. so we're approving uses. Yes. And I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be difficult, but you know, this is a this is a conceptual plan. Yes. It lacks de it lacks detail, and I know it costs money to get detail. Um, but I, I'm just saying, like I don't I don't even know what we'd be approving here, other than sort of a blank slate to kind of do whatever you want, and that's not normally what we do. Yes, that would be more of a that would be more of a, a rezoning change, and. Yes. You know, even even down to this lease or or site thing. I mean, those are important things to know. So, you know, I I can see why Sandra maybe struggled with conditions because yes, sir. what what conditions could you possibly come up with? And then the other thing I I would just ask you, like have have, I mean, we've listen, we we. And I know I might be coming off as, as fairly negative. I, I get that, but you know, we we had a a a glamping thing come before the county, okay? And and I was actually sort of a, an advocate of it. Uh, Trevor, is that your name? Yes, sir. Yes, or, or yeah, Trevor. Like you were going to stay at a at a nice little cottage in Gordonsville, weren't you? When this was public, well, that's that's our place. So. You know, I'm not against, I'm not against this, you know, tourism, I'm, you know, but I'm just saying like, there's going to be a tremendous amount of public resistance to this. And, and what we're going to be hammered with are details. Yes. Sir. And so I, I just don't see the details here. And, and even me personally, I, 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 I wouldn't be open to approving a store, a pool, a fuel station, a laundromat, a snack shop on any of these blue squares, wherever you guys decide it should be someday. So that's, if they're not, you know, it's not, I don't have any questions really. I just, I have comments and, and I don't see the detail. Well, can I, well, can I ask you a question? Hoping, Mr. Oh, one quick statement and I'll be, I'll mute myself. <laughs> that's what we're hoping to, to get tonight is to, to get this out there, get, get, Get a position taken and work with staff. And I'm sorry, Trevor, go ahead. And I'm actually right. going to myself because I talk too much. Yeah, so Mr. Capel, I, I 
I, I hear what you're saying and I, I completely appreciate your position. So, but help me understand where we need to get to, because as you, we've already distinguished between their site plan approval that's different than the SUP process. So you're, you're agreeing that we don't really have to go all the way down a whole site plan rabbit trail to get a site plan put together completed. It's more about the uses. Is it, should we be identifying? So there's obviously some things that we've already touched on tonight that, are in, that have been confusing and need to be locked down. For example, stated clearly in a, an updated application that this is a lease arrangement facility owned and operated by one entity. Um, there also, um, uh, there was the, um, <clears throat> this question about what uses. So we have a laundry list of, of use types. Um, are you looking for us to basically winnow that down and say, these are the sort of things, the minimum list of what we want, and, and you can react to the specific uses only and improve those uses only. And then I think I had one more, which was the- um, Transportation. Well, yeah, there's that. We need to address that. I was thinking there was, um, I lost it. There was a third item that was um, seemed well, I hope you'll find, uh, the, give us the list of other sites and give us some type of, uh, uh, I would say, pros and benefits to Orange County would be. Listen, and, 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 and I definitely agree with that. And, and what I'd like to say is, and we all have different um, uh, you know, things, how we're looking at it. And I would tell you, Supervisor Capel, we've, we've spent a lot of money. I'm not worried about spending the money to make the right decision because some of it can be, can, you know, work for a, uh, the road network, the, sew, the sew, uh, septic, the wells. That can be for a subdivision or it could be for anything. So when we first was looking at this property, property we were thinking, you know, maybe doing the 41 bio rights, maybe going through a rezoning. We've actually spent the money, so I think you'll be pleasantly surprised that we can answer a lot of questions. But again, with the format that we had, you know, we've progressed the ball a long way before this, uh, since the submission. And I think uh, Trevor's put that plan up in front of you. That's the plan. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that was it. That was the third thing. The, the plan that you all had in the application, and again, this speaks to the evolution of this project over three months since we prepared that. Um, yeah, you, you pointed out a lot of bubble diagrams, very vague. We, we didn't have a layout nailed down to share with you. Now we have a better layout um, that's still in flux. There's still things evolving on it, but it is it has taken shape and form with much more detail, um, even conceptual though it is. Um, that sort of thing, you're looking for a more realistic conceptual um, layout of things rather than just a bubble diagram. Yeah, and, and I would say that if you look at it, it went from an application of 250 to now we're talking between 150, 160. Uh, that's because we're trying to do what's best for this site to ensure all those. And that site, like I said, he's sharing, um, I think we shared it tonight, uh, this has been work with Mr. Hayden because, you know, we're trying to get his incorporating his vision. I mean, he, I mean, that's the person I'm looking at, you know, that I have to keep moving. So we've spent the money up front to answer all these questions and we just need a format and a platform to start giving it to you. So I don't think you'll think that you haven't spent the money. It's just, we need the questions to address it. So Thank you. I'm assuming you have a business plan and that will deal with the revenue issues that the county is concerned with. It will deal with the ownership issues that you're dealing with. Uh, I'm also assuming that uh, uh, Sandra will place the presentation on the website for the general public to see. Yeah, we uh, 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 hold on just a second. Hold on just a second, everybody. We're gonna we're gonna kind of cut this down and kind of shove it down on this a little bit. We've covered a lot of bases tonight. I think the applicants got a, a more than a general idea of what the planning commission is looking forward to. We've set the deadline for the public comment. Um, so at this time, I think it's time for us to entertain a motion to. Uh, table this uh, or postpone this meeting or continue this meeting, whatever the proper term is, Mr. Lansing, 
until a later date. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Thornton is back. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, we, we lost power some time ago, so I lost my Wi-Fi connection, but I am obviously here on the phone. Um, mm -hmm. We, um, I, you know, I had mentioned, and as you all know, we did get some written comments in advance of the meeting this evening. Um, do you all want to save all of those and handle all of the public comments at once yes, um, at the next meeting? Yes, okay, I just wanted, just wanted to double check. It would be held at one time, and uh, we need a motion. Mr. Yes, go Mr. ahead. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll be happy to make a motion. If, I, if you would just allow me just a, just a little bit, just a little bit more, like 30 seconds. All right, go ahead. I mean, I, I mean, you know, like I, I'm reading the the thing. I mean, what what's being presented doesn't really match what was submitted, and so you know there is a question down the road where if it changes, uh, you know, enough, all of a sudden we're we're compelled to do another public hearing. So I mean, I think we're doing that later tonight. So it it just seems a little premature to me for for you all and 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 i'm not saying you did or didn't spend money it's like i understand the dilemma you know i get it but i'm just telling you like this is going to generate a lot of interest and and we're going to get hammered by people with questions and if we can't answer the questions then then what then what are we approving is all i'm saying so i'll leave it with that and i'll uh, mr chairman i'll make a motion to uh, uh, defer this issue to, I don't know, what is it? I don't know when it is, the next meeting or the meeting in September or, or what, what's your pleasure, sir? To the next meeting. Okay, so uh, do I? Excuse, excuse me, I, I just wanted to clarify that. Do you mean that the next meeting that you discussed for August 20th or do you mean your next regular meeting? I mean, the next meeting we discussed for August the 20th. Okay. Okay. So I, I make a, I, make, I, I, I don't think that uh, that's enough time. I would uh, strongly recommend we do it uh, the 3rd of September. Well, uh, I, um, I um, concur with Mr. Let's, Hodges. Let's see what we get then. They, they're saying they can do some great things in two weeks. Let's 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 count on them putting forth their best effort. Well, and if we continue. We will. Yeah, Hutch, I I don't disagree with you. I don't, and I don't mind talking more on the twentieth. I, I, again, like uh, you know, you're going to see the comments that come in, and you know, right. we're going to have to answer the questions as as commissioners. And then the supervisors are going to have to answer them. So um, I guess what we'd, we're really doing is continuing. And, you know, I, I would, I guess, let me, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, applicants, are, are you up for coming back on the 20th? Or do you want to come back on in September? And, and I don't mean to imply in any way that if you came back in the 20th, we'd be any closer. But I, I just want to, if you'd like to, come back on the 20th and continue discussions. I mean, I'm up for it. I don't know how the other commissioners are, and I'd be happy to, to make the motion that way. Well, I'd like to, with Chairman Brooke, I, I would agree that we're ready to work very diligently to give you all the answers. And the only way to know that is we'll be prepared for the next meeting. And during that time, we'll be working very closely to get all these questions answered. That's where I'm at. Let me make a comment here, and it goes back to Mr. Yancey's comment that the application uh, name is for the Orange County Resort LLC, which is a non-entity. Well, you can hold on here. Hold on, hold on, hold on just a second. Let's go to the let's go to the motion that's on the floor to move it to the next. Uh, yeah, let me, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll finish my motion. Uh, I make a motion to continue this to August 20th at the August 20th meeting. Is there a second? Is there a second? Chair seconds it. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Two ayes. Did I hear anybody else? All nays? Nay. Nay. Uh, Mrs. Zellmaker, you will be the tiebreaker. Where are you? Hello? 
<laughs> this is Zellmaker. <coughs> Hello. All right, our motion dies. Approved. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I said I. All right, okay. So you agree to move it to the 20th? Yes. What's your vote to the 20th or not? I can't hear you, Julie. I can't hear you. I think we lost her again. I think we did. She said I, but I didn't know for what. So yeah, I don't either. She's <laughs> back on the phone. Julie? Julie. Hello? Yes. It says I'm unmuted. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, hear you. Yeah, hear you. So the motion was to move it until the 20th. And the vote was held. Were you for or against that motion? For the 20th. For the 20th. Okay. We we'll move to the 20th. Ms. Elmaker has voted as motion. We're going to take a 10 minute break at this point. The commission will be at a 10 minute break. And when we come back, we'll take up the next SUP with the rules. It is 8.32 by my clock. We'll be back at 8.42. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. I really do appreciate everybody's time. Thank you very much and uh, have a beautiful night. Mr. Chairman, are you still there? I think he's the in vice chairman. Uh, vice chairman's uh, here, Sandra. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I think he went for a quick break. I, 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 since I, since I can't see who anyone he was, now, he um, was twisting in the seat, so I knew I needed to go. Yeah, um, Jason, who seconded that your motion? Uh, Donald Brooks did. Donald, okay. I I thought I heard him say the chair, but I wasn't sure. So, okay. Yeah, and then. Uh, uh, you, you got the vote yeah, count, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. All right. Didn't go as good as I'd like it. Hey, Sandra. Yes. Yeah, I. I um, we we need to talk about this this thing a little bit, I guess, huh? Well, we do. And am I allowed to talk right now? I don't know if I'm allowed to or not, but I can see why you, you couldn't really come up with conditions. Yeah. I don't know if you, yeah, I don't know if you heard me say that or not. I, I did. Yeah. I was, I was back one then and, and I did want it to say, and, and just, we just kind of moved ahead, but your point about, you know, more specificity regarding the uses, I think will be important, um, you know, for the, for a permit, if, if it's approved, um, because yeah, I don't, I don't know where I anything mean, I think is. Yeah. I mean, I, it's like, and you know, this is like, you know, four special use permits in one, all couched under an RV park. So I, you know, I, I have questions like, you know, are, <laughs> you know, this gets back to an Eric, uh, my, uh, Eric might be able to answer this. Um, you know, I don't see where on agricultural land a, a gas station is allowed. Mm -hmm. And and so I would suspect that a gas station is an accessory use to an RV park would not be allowed, even by yeah, special I, use permit. Yeah, I mean, I would have to look at, yeah, look at the ordinance, but I, I, I think you're right. We just have to. You can, you look, can look up, yeah. you can look up Capel et al versus Orange County, Virginia. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm quite certain that would withstand Virginia Supreme Court uh, okay. ruling, but but yeah, you can't okay. like slip in something that isn't normally allowed. You don't get to slip it in as an accessory use. Right, so, right. So, I mean, there's yeah, so. a, lot, a lot going on here. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we can get it get it sorted out. Um, I mean, when, we will one way or the other. Yeah. Well, it's it's getting dark at my house. 
<laughs> I've got a flashlight here. Mark, uh, you're, hey, Senator, you, I don't, you can't come up with any conditions before the 20 or the meeting on the 20th, can you? I, I think we're going to have to have the other information. I mean, there was so I much agree. more, there was so much more tonight than we had to work with before. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I certainly can take a stab at, at drafting some, depending hey, on what information I get in advance. Hey, folks. What? Can, can y'all hear us? Can you hear me? Chairman yeah. Brooks. Yes. Yes, can sir. Everybody just kind of stay silent until we get through this break, because um, I don't want us to have a next support day meeting or something because we're all up here and anytime there's more than one three of us together it could be classified as a meeting sure oh you're right yeah i we so we didn't realize you were there i don't think because i i had, had I, uh, um, yeah, just kind of sit yeah. still there for a second please sandra yes could you call me could i call you Yes, there's an email. I mean, need to make sure that you've read. Okay, yeah, I, I'll do that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've been hearing my phone chime, but I can't pull up email on the computer now, and I can't. I didn't want to risk losing the meeting connection by trying to look at email. So yeah, I'll call you. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, okay, thanks. Bye. started the word She's looking at the email now. She's going to respond back to the friend. Okay.
Mr. Clements, are you about ready? Yes, we're, I'm relieved. <laughs> I understand, George. I mean, Hutch. <laughs> Let me see if the county's ready. Yep, he must be better. He done took us back on. All commissioners available and ready. District one, yes. District two, Mr. Yancey. Yes. All right, District three is here. District four, Ms. Julie. Yes, I'm here. All right, District five, Hutch is available. Yep. We're, ready, we're ready to start again. Um, moving forward, we'll call, I'll call on Mr. Lansing who has some information for us. Sure. Uh, so uh, one thing we are considering is uh, the fact that under uh, under the Code of Virginia, uh, the local government is empowered to uh, to suspend uh, certain deadlines uh, that would uh, that would take place because of the COVID nineteen pandemic, and uh, the coronavirus pandemic has really um, impacted our ability to gather, for the public to gather, uh, and even for the planning commission to gather safety, safely. So it's, it's imposed a lot of practical dilemmas uh, on, um, on, on our ability to, uh, to meet certain procedural functions. Uh, in light of that, um, we, uh, we just received uh, an email from the county administrator uh, that uh, is considering invoking the county's emergency management authority Mm -hmm. um, because uh, of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. And he notes that the zoning action is not essential business and can be accommodated until the planning commission is able to meet in person again. Um, that is consistent with his emergency management authority uh, that was uh, granted in an ordinance adopted uh, on March the 16th, 2020 uh, under section eight um, closing non-essential functions. Um, and uh, on top of that, uh, there is uh, a, an additional ordinance adopted uh, in April of this year uh, that, as we mentioned earlier in this meeting, allows for, uh, for certain deadlines to be told. All that to say, uh, the Planning Commission has the authority to, uh, to essentially punt the uh, any SUP, and particularly this uh, this one, which was, has I think hundreds of pages of comments um, down the road, if it so desires, uh, I'm not I'm not advocating any position on this. Obviously, that is up to the commission. I'm just laying out the legal framework that allows the commission to make that decision uh, if it wants to. Um, but the commission uh, doesn't have to make a decision on this now if it doesn't want to. Uh, the, uh, the ordinances that we have in place uh, allow a tolling of that deadline. Did Mr. Uh, Voorhees want to speak on this issue or do we know? Ted, are you still with us? Hello? 
Did you want to speak to this issue or not? I'm happy to speak briefly, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lansing laid it out pretty clearly. Um, I, I think that the Planning Commission, y'all have really tried uh, under these challenging circumstances to uh, figure out how to advance this case and, and work with the staff and the circumstances that we have. Um, I think the point I would like to make is that regardless of what the Planning Co Commission decides to do, which is to either suspend this uh, matter or to proceed with it, I'm not going to move it forward to the Board of Supervisors until we can meet in person and, and, and accommodate the public. I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to do it. And if we proceed tonight, the way we plan to proceed is we're going to be here for about three hours reading these comments into the record. And so you'll, you'll get to listen to my pleasant voice for maybe 40 minutes or an hour uh, reading all this. And that's just the way, you know, this, this ordinance is, is structured, the, the way we have to do it. I am absolutely not going to put the Board of Supervisors through that. So I will not place it on the agenda. So therefore, it makes it a little bit, um, uh, well, it makes it unimportant whether the Planning Commission advances this case at this time or chooses to advance it later because it's not going forward to the Board of Supervisors until such time as we can have uh, a, an in-person meeting uh, and accommodate an audience that will obviously have interest in this case as expressed by all these, these emails. Uh, and it, it, as long as we cannot do that safely, uh, you know, I'm certainly not going to have a, a Board of Supervisors meeting that involves reading three or four hours uh, of, of emails into the record. You're talking about the pyrotechnic SUP, right? That's correct. Commissioners, uh, fellow commissioners, hearing what the county administrator has said, from the chair's perspective, if it's not going anywhere, it's not a very prudent thing for us to sit here three hours to hear it and push it, in my opinion, um, at this point, um, because it cannot be approved until the Board of Supervisors approves it, and we could hear it in a if if. The board says they want to, they were ready to entertain it. We could hear it a week before and they get a week after and they'll be done. Uh, just what's the pleasure of the commission? Do we need to notify the public if we decide not to deal with this now? We're, they're listening to the meeting as we speak. Well, a limited amount are. Well, but those who want to join the meeting as it would be if you had an uh, in-person meeting. But I, I would think we would notify when it happened that we pushed it down the road. Mr. Chairman, may, may, I, uh, may I ask Mr. Voorhees a question, please? Sure. <clears throat> Hi, Mr. Voorhees. We've not uh, spoken, but uh, I have a question for you. What, what is your view on in-person meetings in general at this moment and for the foreseeable future? So I think that um, they can potentially happen under the right circumstances. Uh, the, 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 the issue with this particular case is it, it has such interest that we're talking about moving to a larger venue with screening and distancing. And, and I think that's how this case was originally perceived to, to, to you know, need to be handled. It would be move to the to the school's TIAC building and, and accommodate it that way. So that's how it was proceeding. But when the uh, Planning Commission decided to make their presence remote, that then moved that possibility away. So one, once uh, the, the Planning Commission feels like they can conduct it in person, and I think it could be conducted in person in that way. Um, I think that the Board of Supervisors could get to that point, but they're, they're, not, they're not there yet. They're not there where um, we're going to, you know, be able to handle this virtual 
multi-hour reading kind of thing. If, if we uh, can get to a, a little more normal operation and do an in-person meeting, it could potentially happen. If we have the same level of interest, we would have to relocate our meeting uh, to the appropriate venue. Mr. Chairman, I asked that question because I don't want this to be used as a reason to have to have an in-person meeting. If zoning is so unimportant that it can just be moved willy-nilly, you know, then, then that's no reason to have an in-person meeting. And my personal preference in general and my personal belief on this issue is that for the foreseeable future, we have to figure out how to do it this way. And I don't have a lot of interest sitting in a room while 300 people parade in and, and potentially yell and talk while I'm sitting in the room. And, and that's particularly driven by how I see people behaving. And, uh, you know, so I asked that question, Mr. Voorhees, because I don't want down the road for something like this to be used as well. We have to meet in person because we have all these issues stacked up and the only way we can deal with it is to meet in person. Uh, fair enough and thank you for that thought. And um, I, I think the fact that we have this level of interest is important to this decision. Uh, as we, you know, spent considerable time on the previous issue, issue um, uh, well, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me take that back. That's not really the point I'm trying to make. We don't know how, how much public input we'll get on any issue until it gets presented. Uh, and then I think when we, we sense it from the phone calls and the emails and the letters, that helps us to understand whether or not we can accommodate the crowd. So uh, if you get a fairly routine matter where maybe one or two people want to speak, I think we can accommodate those in person. But when you get a case that's got uh, many, many dozens, if not hundreds of, of pieces of correspondence, the assumption is you're going to get many, many dozens, if not a hundred people. And that is the kind of gathering that is currently contrary to best practices uh, during, during the pandemic. And I think triggers the option of, of deciding that the case is non-essential and, uh, and, and it's not safe to accommodate it. Uh, the substance of the, of the case also matters somewhat. And if, if um, we're talking about a case that would substantially harm uh, you know, somebody's livelihood or, or something like that, then I think we have to give it a little bit more deference. What the kind of work you do as a planning commission is certainly very important to the county, very important to the applicant, uh, and very important to you as, as commissioners. Um, without trying to prejudice the outcome of this case, I would, however, say that it is not the kind of case that I would give uh, a, a lot of extra weight to in terms of whether it's decided now or later, the activity uh, that's being sought is, you know, for lack of a better term, more of a recreational nature. It's not, you know, uh, a, a case of, of approving the site plan for a factory that would employ people and, and drive their livelihood. Uh, so when I weigh all these things out against the, the, you know, the governmental interest to protect health and safety, I think that comes out on top and, and suggests that a deferral is a reasonable approach. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just one, one last question. Mr. Voorhees, uh, thank you. Fair points. I appreciate the response. Um, Mr. Lansing, why is it we can't solve this problem of having to read the letters in. It's, it seems absolutely ludicrous to me. Why, why is it we have to read them in now, but when we meet in person, we don't have to read them in? So why it is we can't read the letters in, I mean, that's not up to me, that's up to the commission. Uh, the commission has the authority, if you want to, to, to read these letters, 
none of us can really take that authority away from you or the board and that's certainly not but, no I'm, I'm i'm sorry mr lynch sorry to interrupt i'm asking yeah. why we're required to read them in why why happen? are we required to read them in sure. and why can we not change that right. we don't have to read letters in when we meet in person right they show up they're submitted sometimes we read them sometimes we don't but they're always part of the record so right. so what what gives so um what we're dealing with is the interplay of two different laws. One of them is a state law and one of them is a local ordinance. The state law that we're dealing with uh, is a section in the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, which requires all meetings to be public. Uh, and uh, generally that prohibits online meetings. Generally it prohibits, uh, say members of a public body such as the Planning Commission, from logging in remotely. Now, there are a few exceptions, uh, and the Planning Commission has uh, worked with some of those. Actually, I don't know if the Planning Commission has. Some of our other public bodies have worked with some of those exceptions in the past. Uh, they involve a quorum having to be physically assembled, um, while one member who's not available logs in remotely. That's what the state code allows. So ordinarily, um, holding a meeting where no one is physically assembled, um, not a quorum, no one, everyone is just logging in on their computers, normally that would violate the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. However, um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, this triggers another state code section. Uh, and uh, off the top of my head, I believe it is Virginia Code Section 15.214.13. That might be the wrong number, but I believe that's it. Um, and what that code section provides is that uh, a locality has the authority to ensure continuity of the operations of government when a state of public emergency has been declared by the government, uh, by, by the governor. Uh, and it can do that notwithstanding any provision of law, general or special. In other words, um, any anything in uh, local law or even the code of Virginia can be suspended by this local ordinance uh, in order to ensure continuity of government. Um, <clears throat> that is what the county did in April. Uh, it adopted uh, an ordinance that suspends that FOIA section and allows us to hold these meetings online. Uh, we borrowed a sort of model ordinance that had been drafted by VACO, um, the Virginia Association of Counties, um, and that had been submitted as sort of a, a model ordinance that allows all of the normal rights that people have, you know, such as public input for a public hearing. And the way they struck that balance of, um, of providing for public input, but also allowing uh, these meetings to be conducted. The way they'd struck that balance was by allowing um, comments to be received either in writing or um, or for the public to be able to interact uh, in this live meeting. So that'd probably be the easiest way of doing it if we had public interaction where, you know, any public commenter could, could log into, you know, some Zoom meeting. But that presents major security issues that uh, as, as we've been told by our IT director in Orange County, uh, the FBI has sent warnings about. So that leaves us with only this option of soliciting comments in writing. Um, so we have to make a choice between basically holding a meeting that's in compliance with this ordinance, which would require these written comments to be read into the record, um, or holding a meeting that's in compliance with FOIA. And we can choose which, which ones we're gonna do, um, but we can't do neither. We, we, can't, uh, we can't just strike it one way or the other. Does that make sense? I, I know that's, that's kind of- it, it does, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Chairman, for cool. letting me ask that question. Appreciate it. Eric, it does make sense, but the only question I would have is that why not the placement of the written uh, comment in the minutes 
does not suffice for hearing the comment. I'm just, I'm, I'm yeah. lost on to, right. because in a, in a real world, if I read something and I miss a word or misspeak to a word or add a word, I have altered the comment. But if I place the written comment in the minutes, if somebody forwarded it, they would get that written comment. Yeah. Right. So why, does that, why does it have to be actually audibly read and not uh, read as in they do on minutes and everything else? What, what part of what part of our ordinance that, that or the law got out of whack on that? Yeah. So I mean that's that's a really good question. I mean the the, the simple answer is we're dealing with the ordinance as we have it right now, and this ordinance this ordinance as it as it stands now says uh, under section 2e uh, that they have to be read into the record so hold your point so if we ask the board to change the ordinance would we be in compliance with the law just to say that comments can be placed in record and not read sure that i mean the board could depart uh i mean it has the authority it has the legal authority to depart from uh, the model ordinance that was suggested by Baco. Right. I, I, I haven't done that at this point. But I don't think I don't think anybody in their writing of the model ordinance expected the. Right. I think because it, because it's a, it's a new world. It's and so here's what I would ask uh, if the fellow commissioners this consensus agree with me or consensus disagree with me. I would ask that we would uh, again continue this, but in the continuance of it, that we would ask in written form uh, a request to the board to change that part that's in there and all the comments will be received, but they would not have to be read. Um, Mr. Chairman, this is George Nancy, District 2. Uh, first of all, um, I'm value all the comments made, uh, especially the, Mr. Vori's comments and recommendation. Um, I think he has hit the nail on the head. Uh, this issue right now, given the venom and interest and in all the other adjectives you can add to it, uh, has gotten out of hand. Uh, I've heard all kinds of rumors about myself my son um, in terms of having an interest in uh, the, the uh, fireworks uh, process. We've received a couple of emails that one of which I particularly consider threatening, uh, which I did not appreciate. But I also appreciate his candor. Uh, he has said unequivocally, he cannot in good faith make the recommendation to the supervisors to put this on the agenda. So therefore, it is my recommendation that we basically pump this thing until we can get into a mode of having a physical presence. And it is a safe presence for all of us, not just a particular few. And that's my position at this time, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Jim Hutchison, uh, I also, uh, agree with uh, the comments made by Mr. Voorhees. I, I do have one concern and uh, it goes back to continuity of government and the intent of the Board of Supervisors to maintain that continuity of government. We cannot answer how long this thing's going to last. How long do we delay this uh, before we start functioning again as, as a government? Well, Mr. Hutchinson, if you would, I think if we submit that letter of, of request to the board, it will help them and us to just add this these comments in. I think what everybody's trying to get around is listening to three and a half to four hours of uh, comments. Not that we don't want to hear them, but we've already read them. We've got some at home. So I think... Again, I asked the commission to say, hey, board, inject us in. That's, that's only going to help them because I can assure you the same comments that we have received, and I think Mr. Voorhees alluded to it, they're going to receive because all you got to do is 
push send to them <laughs> like he did to us. They don't even have to retype it. <laughs> so they're virtually ahead of the game. So he's saying it's not going anywhere. So let's see if I can speed it up a little bit. I solicit a motion from the commissioners that encompasses that we would continue this to our September the 3rd meeting. And the reason I'm skipping the 20th meeting is I don't think the board, there's a more board meet in between now and the 20th meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, they do meet on Tuesday. I don't think that we're going to be able to accommodate an ordinance change that quickly because we would have to post notice anytime we adopt an ordinance. Right. Uh, but we do meet a second time uh, this month, and um, there may be time to get that uh, pu published before then. I would have to double check, but I, I, I think we might be able to hit that deadline. So while I've got your, uh, I want to say, Chairman, before we entertain that motion, um, if my memory serves me from the original discussions and the content of the package submitted by the applicant and this SUP, their season is mainly from March to September. September is right on top of us right now. So therefore, if we move to September, the next step it gets to the Board of Supervisors is probably gonna be October at earliest. So therefore, they have passed their time frame of utilizing the requirements of the of the SUP. George, um, that's, George, that's a, a really mute point because Mr. Voorhees has already said he's not going to take it to- Well, the, that, that's my point. You know, why, why are we asking the supervisors to do something that is not helping the applicant or anybody else at this yeah, point? George, it will. It will help us in the future for any comments that come, not just for this. We're not doing it for just this applicant we're doing it for the foreseeable future until this ordinance is gone so we don't get to this impasse again there may be other applicants uh issues that comes with public comment this is not no it's it, we should never set a president to help a particular applicant we should do everything I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking to help this applicant specifically i'm saying you know if the determination is because of an issue being uh, controversial that we cannot do anything until it is in person. Uh, we are, we're stymied. So therefore, um, you can do what you want, but that's not what we're I, saying. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is change the ordinance so that the public comment that we get can be placed in the record and not have to be read in the record. That we're not asking anything else other than doing that. Okay. And, and that's independent of this particular issue, correct, that's Mr. Independent. Chairman? Yes, this issue just brings the issue, but it's independent of this issue because we've got um, this RV park that uh, we just talked about, just to be honest about, that I've got four calls this morning on. So I think we're going to have this going on in, uh, forever and eternity there. So again, I would ask that if we could get a motion to ask the board, move this to no, September 3rd, but also ask the board to... Uh, change the ordinance to accommodate. What's the pleasure? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, while you're waiting waiting for the um, commissioners to, to ponder your, your invitation for motion, um, if let's say we get to um, September 3rd and it's um, determined that it's still not safe to meet in person. Now, I, and I don't know, I don't know whether the board would be able to act, you know, that quickly to, to change the ordinances as you were, you know, potentially requesting. But um, I'm just, just thinking about timing. I mean, September 3rd is, is a month from now. Um, and as someone has already pointed out, we don't know how long this situation will last. So um, I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering, and, and, and just 
wondering, um, I don't have a suggestion really, but it, is it going to serve a purpose to establish a date right now um, to take this up again? Well, I think if we show the urgency to the board based on the county administrator's posture in this, um, I, I didn't hear him say, no, I'm not going to entertain that before the board. I heard him say we have to have just time. I think it'll help us all because then we can do it and we don't have, we can move forward with the applicants. They're not going to get into their season now anyway, uh, because the board's not going to entertain it under this ordinance. The, the help that for the applicant, if there is any, is that the board would change the ordinance. That's the help. Mr. Chairman. I, I, under, I understand that, but that, that, that I, I think I had a, a different point, but it, Perhaps it doesn't need to be hashed out right now. I'm well, I'm just, no, I was just, I thought I was hearing a motion or, or at least a suggestion that, that there be a motion to defer SUP 20-01 to September 3rd. And I'm just questioning whether it's helpful to, to set that date not knowing whether we will be able to meet in person at that point. And I, I don't have a, a sense from what I've heard so far, how quickly the board may be able to act to amend the ordinance. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, in response to Sandra's thought, I wonder if a, a commissioner might uh, consider an amend, amendment to that motion that said something along the lines of, uh, or the first available meeting following the amendment to the ordinance or something along those lines. That, that, that's a good, that's a good thought. Uh, is there a commissioner that would uh, entertain that motion to present? Well, I mean, if, if, uh, if I understand correctly, what all we're doing is eliminating reading all of these comments submitted by citizens into the record. What we're not addressing is the fact that the board is not going to have a meeting on this until they can do it publicly, period. No, if we don't have to read the minutes, I'm sorry, if we don't have to read the comments, the board then would entertain it also. He, Mr. Voorhees has just basically said he's not going to expose the, 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 the board of supervisors on, under these circumstances. That's not what I heard. What I heard is he's not going to present it to the board until the public can come in and do public comments. That's, well, he, he's, a, he's, on, he's on, let him speak. Ted, speak to that. that yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That that's a great point. I I I think um, uh, I did not intend to say that the board would not be able to address this unless they could have a public meeting, provided that we didn't have to go through the current procedure. So I think the chairman is 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 correct in 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 trying to state my intent, and it's that we don't have. Uh, this sort of three, four hours of of comments read into the record. The preferred I have, I have uh, no problem with it, idea then. of a complex matter being in person, uh, I, I think that is the preferred matter. But if if the board's insistent on having a public meeting, I would recommend that they defer that case. Um, but if uh, it can be accommodated electronically without having to spend three or four hours reading into the record, then uh, that, that would also be uh, an available option. I have no problem with that then. Well, back to my motion. Can we, get, can we get one for one of the commissioners, please? It's just usually inappropriate, inappropriate for the chair to make a motion. Mr. Chairman, one, one clarification, please. So it's not that these letters don't become part of the record. They do. They are part of the record if we change it's just that we don't have to actually read them into the record. Right. Is that true? Okay. That's the, that's the, that's the truth. We don't physically read them. They are placed into the record. Okay. Does everybody understand that now? 
Mr. Chairman, would you read or, or state what you believe is a correct motion that we need to make? Yes. The motion is, is that we would continue SUP 20-01 to September the 3rd or a date after the Board of Supervisors entertains the changing of the ordinance that the comments would be taken into record and not necessarily read into record. Then I so move. Is there a second? Uh, I'll second it, Chairman Brooks. And, and I just want to clarify, for me, it's it's not pertinent to this issue. It's it's pertinent in general. And I think as a body, we need to prepare for the long haul. Right. I, I, I think it's possible things may get better in September. I don't okay. think the math adds up. I, I, I think we're, we're likely headed in, in a different direction. I'll reserve judgment. But I think anything we can do to make virtual meetings more accommodating and useful for everyone is a good step in the right direction. And it maintains continuity of government. So it's been moved and second by Commissioner Hutchison I'm sorry, moved by Commissioner Hudson and seconded by Commissioner Capel. All in favor say aye. 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 It's been moved and, and approved unanimously. Thank you so much. I think that'll help us all in the long run. Now, Eric, I, I know I don't have this authority, but can I ask you to help out getting a letter to um the county board yeah. supervisors and you can, you can uh if you need my signature just let me know but if you want to send it yourself that's fine mr Voorhees is online so he knows exactly what we're trying to do i think they're going to be appreciative and say yeah we need to do this too <laughs> I <Yeah. really> do. <laughs> mr. chairman as, as long as we're on that subject i i think it's high time i take personal responsibility for what this continuity of government ordinance says because when it came through VACO, I reviewed it for the county. And so the version that we have is something that went through my review after it was drafted by VACO uh, to, uh, to present before the board. So, uh, so it, it isn't necessarily the board's intention or my intention or uh, VACO's intention uh, that we would you know, kind of find ourselves in the trap that we're in right now. Um, but that's just, that's the way that this has played out. And uh, we're all kind of finding our way one step at a time in the midst of this coronavirus crisis. We gotta be flexible. I mean, the schools are going through the same problem. Right. Mm -hmm. What I will do also, um, I will touch bases with a number of the supervisors and try to edge it along. Um, from what I'm hearing about Mr. Voorhees, he's new here, but I'm understanding he's a pretty good uh, leader, so um, he should be able to help us pretty much on this. And uh, we appreciate you following your sword, but you can get up off it. All of us make a <laughs> make a little hitch in the road every now and then. We, we, we also get better as we go through. All right. That's been taken care of. We have no work session. We have no old business. We have some reports. Mr. Johnson didn't sign on. I think Mrs. Thornton, you up with your planning services report. Um, I think the only thing that I would offer right now is that we do have another, um, we have a special use permit application pending that we were shooting for the September 3rd meeting date on. Um, Application review committee comments have been solicited for a um, storage facility. Um, we have a rezoning application pending, which um, we were expecting or are expecting to place on your October meeting agenda. And it's for a, a, a multi-use project in the uh, GWAP. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Chairman, yes. may, may I? Uh... Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so 
so listen, I, I get the, the issues with timing, you know, and, and difficulty, but I, I really, if I would, it would be great to get these things a little earlier. Um, you know, like this oh. RV thing, you know, we've been hearing about this for at least a couple meetings, you know, that it was coming. Um, and I, and I understand the sensitivity, you know, having these discussions, but you know, the idea, particularly on the RV issue, I mean, the idea that we would get that plan, you know, on a Friday and be in, in any shape to really have a, a good discussion about it on Thursday. And then, you know, to hear the applicants say, well, you know, in two weeks we'll be ready. And I'm looking at it like saying, yeah, good luck with that. I mean, if there's any way we could perhaps get these things a little earlier and again, Sandra, I'm, I understand it's difficult, but but maybe it would require changing the meetings a little bit or, or something. Anything to 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 try to get it earlier uh, would be helpful, particularly if it's multiple issues, you know, that are on the sure. agenda. Well, yeah, I certainly I certainly know. I mean, this uh, it, it was not not my my goal to to get so much material to you at the last minute. Um, I would say, though, as far as the applications themselves go, I mean, getting the packages out on Thursday or Friday in advance of the meeting, I think, is how it's, at least, I believe, how it's been managed in the past. But we it, certainly it, can, can it has. strive can strive to, you know, and, and knowing, you know, the, you know, hearing your request, I mean, we certainly will, will strive to, um, <laughs> to, to get things out uh, more quickly, um, I, I know that some efforts are being made to, you know, increase staff uh, for our work area. Um, that effort had been underway uh, before we entered the COVID-19 response mode, which kind of derailed things. So, you know, we've been been kind of, I hate to say limping along, but 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 kind of limping along for a little while now. Um, but yeah, I, I, I can appreciate the desire to have things things sooner. Um, so we we will will work toward that end. We've had this conversation before, and you know, um, it's it's no real quick fix to it. I would just say that we need to have a cutoff time that we will not get anything unless it's an emergency before, um, added to our packets. Uh, after 24 hours before the meeting's going to start. Um, I think some of the commissioners, you know, just grabbing things today and trying to get, get to a meeting is pretty hard. At the, and But I'd rather get it than not get it, but it is what it is. All right, so after that, we got commissioners' comments, and we're going to start with District One. Go to two, three, four, and then five. Mr. Capel, you're up. Uh, just, just quickly, I, I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman, for um, you know accommodating this virtual meeting, and I want to thank the staff and uh, uh, Mr. Voorhees as well. Um, I've kind of stated my opinion previously. You know we. We need to be prepared for the long haul, right? And and we need to hold the line, and we need to really be serious. And um, so I, I just appreciate the effort that's being made, and um, I hope we're we're able to continue, and uh, really just work together on this because um, I, I just feel like if if we're all together and diligent and disciplined and aligned. We'll we'll have a better outcome both uh, in terms of um, life lost and and the economy, and so that that's my goal. And so um, thanks for for working with us on all this. Appreciate it. And that's all I have. Mr. Yancey, District Two. I also echo Mr. Capel's um, response. But I also would like to add the following. Uh, I think the staff uh, should be commended uh, for holding the ship uh, on course as much as they could under the circumstances. And the last discussion we just had tonight on the SUP, 
before us. Uh, there were multiple occasions, according to information I have, that the, the applicant was asked for additional supporting information, which was not provided. A prime example of that was the slide presentation tonight, which would have been great to have in the package beforehand, but that's a different subject. I also commend uh, our county administrator for his stance. Uh, it is prudent, it is a wise um, decision. And I think uh, as Mr. Capel alludes to, um, we're in, I, I'm an optimist, but in this particular pandemic situation, uh, I think you've got to look at long term, and we're in this for a longer period of time than most citizens believe that we're going to be in. And that's part of our problem that we're dealing with, but that's another subject. And I thank you all for your, your indulgence and, and participation tonight uh, in this process because. Uh, Contrary to some other citizens that have claimed that we're not transparent, I think we're very transparent in our actions and our deeds. And uh, I commend all of you for that effort. I echo everything that George and um, Jason has said. I want to add a couple things to it and tell Tracy and Sandra, personally, um, y'all have been a great help in this process. You have been very timely, very organized, and very astute and very communicative, uh, communicative to me when uh, I called and very patient when I can't answer. And when I tell you to hang on a second, you do. And uh, that's greatly appreciated. And I would also try to convey to you is that Take everything that happens in our workday as professional and not personal. Don't let it get underneath your skin. I know you endured some profane allegations and some crazy, and I'll say conversations with some folks that just don't understand how government works. Um, but from the chair and from the commissioners, I just wanna pass along to Ted and that Eric and the staff have done a phenomenal job trying to keep it together. Um, and speaking to Ted earlier today, um, when everybody thought everything was going to pieces, I was, was kind of funny. My wife had said, she said, who are you talking to now? I said, Ted. She said, Ted who? I said, the county administrator. She said, I thought that was Brian. I said, you four months back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes to show how even those who are close to government don't understand how quick things change. And it's important that we encourage each other. And to my fellow commissioners, I understand. I truly do. Um, I was sharing with uh, former chairman of the Board of Supervisors and the chairman of the Planning Commission the other day on the phone at 7.08 when it rang that I've been in some capacity doing something for Orange County for the last 40 years of my 58 years of living. And I have all the faith in the world that we're doing what's right and to the best of our ability. And I entertain anyone that they can show us wrong, we will try to correct it. But I also want to caveat to that Eric, um, I know I'm frustrating sometimes when you're trying to get something legal in my head and I think I'm trying to play lawyer. Uh, I apologize for that also <laughs> because sometimes it's tough because I, I, I hear it. Um, I would ask though that um, the commissioners uh, bear in mind that even if we go to um, not reading the um, comments that the meetings will be a little longer than they have been. Your hour and a half meeting, I think it's about gone. It's gonna take a little bit more time to get through it because we're not in person. And again, I thank everyone for everything that they've done. And with that, I pass it off to Miss Julie. Yeah, I, I agree with what you guys have said, and I appreciate that we've been able to accommodate um, this remote meeting during this pandemic. Um, and uh, I know that there was, you know, 
they wanted to get through the comments and, and have it in public. Um, and I would like for all of those people to be heard because everybody has an opinion on this. Um, and it's, it's too bad that it, it takes too much time to do it, but hopefully the Board of Supervisors can help with getting those comments into the record. Um, and, and so we can move forward and, and do this in an efficient way, um, but also have everybody's um, comments accounted for. So, so thank you for, um, you know, making this a safe process. And um, I think that's, you know, I really appreciate uh, that everybody thought into that. Mr. Hutchinson, thank you, Mr. Zellmaker. Uh, unique uh, circumstances require unique solutions. And uh, we need to remain flexible because I don't think this is the last of adjustments that we'll probably make. And we still don't know how long this thing's gonna last. Uh, I also echo the comments, but a special thanks to uh, Sandra, Tracy and Eric who have been inundated with uh, everything coming in from the community. So my thanks to you and to the commissioners, that's all. My fellow commissioners, we have to change our next meeting date from what's shown on our agenda that said September the 3rd to the 20th. Um, can we do that by consensus? Yes, yes. Mr. Chairman, are we going to change it or are we going to add it? Well, I mean, one way to have one way to have shorter meetings is to have more shorter meetings. Right. And well, I think the more we do this, the better we'll get at it. Well, I say that it says the next meeting date, so let's do it as the next meeting date to eight twenty twenty, and we will be meeting the September third because we placed something on it. So, but the next meeting date will be August the twentieth. Everybody's in agreement with that. Yeah, you're just changing it. That's fine. That's right. And then we, we can pick up the September 3rd one then. So we've got to the point of the meeting that I think a lot of us have been looking for. I solicit a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? I, I'll second it, I guess. All yes. Those people say aye. 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 All opposed can stay. Uh, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, commissioners.